can support us, completed Novel House in link below clip. Thank you for come in and love the sharing story, chapter 981, will never forget, you can help Xiaoyu? The auntie and uncle studied Chen Gu closely. What are you? A psychiatrist? I own a haunted house, but please believe me. Chen Gu looked at the two sincerely. What nonsense are you talking about now? Leave. The old man waved the sword. Before I pulled a sword on you. Please calm down and give me ten minutes, okay? Just ten minutes. Chen Gu used his phone to search for the news article where he had helped the law enforcement in Zhejiang. Look at this. I am the one in the picture with the police. I really am a good person. A helpful citizen that has helped the law enforcement many times? The auntie and uncle compared Chen Gu to the man in the article a few times before they believed him. What do you want from Xiaoyu? I just want to help her. Can you bring me to meet her parents? After Chen Gu realized that the woman had body temperature, he understood that the ghost that he was looking for was the boy in the picture. Xiaoyu was raised in an orphanage. She doesn't have parents. Does she have any other relatives? Who takes care of her, and who provided her with a home? Chen Gu felt like it was quite hard for the woman to live independently in her current state, so she should have a caretaker. We have never heard Xiaoyu talk about her family before. She was abandoned here about a decade ago. She was just a little girl then, standing in the middle of the road. A few officers and I sent her to the police station, and then the people from the orphanage came. They were so reluctant to take Xiaoyu back. I couldn't stand the look on their faces, so I allowed Xiaoyu to temporarily stay with me. The auntie was kind and generous. A decade ago? This time skip was so large that Chen Gu did not know where to start. Ten years was a long time for anyone, enough to forget about the pain and joy that one had experienced, and even the most precious memory faded with time. Has she always been like this for this past ten years? Chen Gu looked at the woman holding the picture, staring with such focus at the faceless boy in the picture. She seemed to be remembering, but there was no recollection in her eyes. Yes, Xiaoyu suffers from memory loss. To get to the bottom of the truth, I've personally been to her orphanage to ask around. They told me that Xiaoyu's memory has been bad since she was young. She couldn't even remember the names of the other orphans, and that caused her to make a lot of mistakes in her chores. The auntie sighed. I don't know whether they told me this on purpose or the illness got worse as she grew older, but after Xiaoyu moved in with me, her illness did worsen. Her memory loss became more prevalent? Yes, she would forget everything until she couldn't even remember her own name. It was that day. The auntie stopped to look at Xiaoyu with some sadness in her eyes. It was that day that she started to tattoo her own name on her body. The name seems to mean a lot to her, and she refused to forget it no matter what. Who gave her this name? The people at the orphanage? No, I heard that when Fang Yu was abandoned at the hospital, there was 271 renminbi in her pocket and a letter. The letter said that her name is Fang Yu. The auntie remembered these things very well. She was truly concerned about Fang Yu and had done many things for her. That letter. Before Chen Ge asked, the auntie knew Chen Ji's intention. The letter has been lost for who knows how long already. Now, the only way to help Fang Yu finds her parent is her name, Fang Yu. That's why she tattooed Fang Yu all over her body. No, there must be something you've missed. Chen Ge stood in the rain. A person wouldn't spend so much effort to look for a parent that she hadn't met. There is someone that she refused to forget at the deepest part of her memory. She believed that the person's name is Fang Yu, and she didn't want to forget that person. Chen Gu signaled for the uncle and auntie to get close to the woman. Do you recognize the boy in this picture? He doesn't even have a face. How are we supposed to tell? You can get many information from the height, build, head shape, and so on. After Fang Yu moved here, has a boy like this appeared around here? Chen Ge asked. Fang Yu rarely interacts with others, 
but she goes to the nearby park every night. How would she know a boy that way? She goes to the park every night? Are you sure about that? Yes, Fang Yu only goes to the doctor in the morning or stays at home. Even for the tattooing, she only goes there at night. This information is very important. Chen Gu understood something. Before moving here, Fang Yu knew this boy in the picture, and they went to the park. Fang Yu looked about the same age as Chen Gu. The boy in the picture looked about 18, so 10 years ago, Fang Yu should have been slightly younger than the boy. Fang Yu lived at the orphanage before this, so the boy in the picture probably grew up at the orphanage as well. They were childhood friends. The rain started to get heavier, and water slid down Chen Ji's face. Fang Yu, do you know which orphanage Fang Yu comes from? It's Jiu Jiang's children's home. It used to be a private orphanage and very unprofessional, but it's gotten much better in recent years. Jiu Jiang's children's home? There's where Fan Yu stays now. Chen Gu prepared to take the picture, but the woman suddenly refused to let go. Fang Yu, I know that you wish to meet the man in the picture, and I will go get him to come meet you now. Chen Gu pressed on the woman's hands lightly. Perhaps he also has been waiting to meet you. The woman slowly let go. Chen Gu put away the picture and ran away through the rain. Wait a minute. The auntie had Fang Yu enter the building before she ran over with the umbrella. Take this. Who knows when will the rain stop? Thanks. The backpack had the comic and picture, but Chen Gu did not deny the kindness. There's no need to thank me. I saw it clearly just now. You wanted to take away the picture, but Xiao Yu refused to let go. This is the first time that she has cared about something so much. The auntie handed Chen Gu the umbrella and took Chen Ji's hands. You have to help her, you understand? The first day she forgot her name, she broke the teacup and used the edge of the shard to carve the name Fang Yu on her body. When she woke up the next day, she forgot and repeated the whole process. No matter what, she has to remember that name, to stop her from injuring herself. It was me who took her to the tattoo artist. I understand. I will get to the bottom of this. Chen Gu looked at the building. The woman was standing on the steps, staring blankly at the names carved on her arms. For other people, ten years would be long, but for her, it was just a mere repetition of the same day over the span of ten years. Chapter 982 The past holding the umbrella, Chen Gu walked into the reigning city. He could not tell whether he was doing this for the mission or really wanted to help the woman. Perhaps it was a mixture of both. He took a taxi to Jiu Jiang's children's home. Even though it was already way past the visiting hours, due to various reasons, Chen Gu knew the guard that was posted at the door and the teacher who looked after Fan Yu at the children's home. After waiting for a few minutes outside the door, Chen Gu was led into the children's home by that same teacher. Are you here to see Fan Yu? The child has gotten so much better compared to before. I do not know what happened, but he stopped closing himself up inside his own world and he started to attempt to interact with others. The paintings that he draws are no longer that scary. Other than black and red crayons, he has started to use other colors as well. The teacher was very happy, and she could not stop praising the improvement that Fan Yu had shown. Chen Gu had no idea whether Fan Yu's change had anything to do with the painter at the School of the Afterlife or not. Perhaps the knot in his heart had been undone, or perhaps the painted had gone to visit Fan Yu after he snuck out from the door. Anything was possible, because the painter was an entity that Chen Gu could not understand. Actually, I am here for something else. Chen Gu followed the teacher into the building. He put the umbrella away and took out the picture from his backpack. Do you mind leading me to the headmaster at the children's home? I have something important to ask him. The headmaster has left already. You can ask me any question that you have in mind. There is nothing at this children's home that I do not know about. The thing that I wish to know is from ten years ago. At the time, this children's home was still a private orphanage. At the time, you would have been at school, right? Ten years ago? 
The teacher thought about it before saying, how about you go and ask the guard? He's the employee that has been on the payroll the longest. He has been watching the gates since this place was a private orphanage. Okay. Chingu invited the guard into the room, and he passed the picture to the old man. Do you have any memory of this boy? He does not even have a face. How am I supposed to tell? The guard took the picture and placed it close to his eyes, his wrinkles folding together. Besides, who can remember things that are from ten years ago that clearly? Try to think about it. At the time, the orphanage should have had a girl with very bad memory. This boy should be the girl's best friend. Hearing the information provided by Chen Gu, the wrinkles on the elder's face deepened. He thought for a long time before suddenly tapping Chen Gu on his arm. There was such a girl. Let me take a gander at that picture again. The guard held the picture by both hands and studied it for a long time. I cannot remember the boy, but I have some recollections of the girl that you mentioned. She was abandoned by her parents when she was very young. Apparently, the reason was because she had a congenital deficiency of the brain. She had a poor memory and problems doing normal chores, and her intelligence was stunted. Congenital deficiency of the brain? That was a new term for Chen Gu. That was what I heard. The girl was quite pretty, and she was obedient, but she kept forgetting things. Many other children were adopted, but she was the only one left at the orphanage. Looks like the elder's memory was being jogged. From the age 2 to around 10, she had spent more than 10 years at the orphanage. Perhaps she missed the crucial period to cure her disease. The girl's illness and symptoms became graver and graver. Initially, she could remember the names of her friends and teachers, and with the teacher's training, she could not only live on herself, but also help around the orphanage. Even though the girl had a bad memory, but she was very hardworking. She never complained when she was bullied, so the orphanage ignored the problems and allowed her to stay to help around. But who knew her conditions would get worse until she could not recognize people's faces anymore? All she could do was the basics to keep herself alive, and anything else was beyond her capability. She was already too old, and she was no help around the orphanage. In fact, she needed other people to spend time to help her. Slowly, the people's attitudes toward her changed. The children at the private orphanage were all still young, so she stood out even if she did not want to. After that, I do not know what got into the boss mind. He knew that the girl had problems with her memory, but he assigned her to watch the gates with me. The leader said that was so that she had something to do, and she would not waste the place's resources, but I have a feeling that the real intention of the leader was to abandon her. He probably even hoped that she would go away on her own and get lost. At this point, the elder sighed. Hope that she would go away and get lost? How could you tell that was the leader's intention at the time? If that was really the case, everything changed. Chenga felt like Fang Yu's change started then. The management kept sending me away to distant locations to deliver documents. I would run all over the city and she would be left behind alone to watch the gates. There was one time after I returned that I realized the girl wasn't inside the booth or the house. I ran all over the orphanage and its surroundings to look for her, and I finally found her under a big tree near the mountain behind the orphanage. At the time, I was so angry. I demanded to know why she wandered away from her post. She told me that she saw a kite that flew very high in the sky. I was so scared for her. Thankfully, the kite ended up stuck in the tree and did not fly away. Even after so many years, when the elder thought about it, he still sighed with lamentation. The girl had left a deep impression on him. Sir, when the girl was guarding the gates with you, did any boys come to accompany her or treat her very nicely? No, she was always alone. This is hard. Chingu looked at the picture in his hands and thought back to what he was told to find any clues that he might have missed. Sir, when you said that Fang Yu got lost the first time, she saw a kite and ran after it. But according to her personality, she was not someone who would do that, so why did she chase after the kite after she saw it? 
Did she like kites a lot? Could the kite have been some kind of symbol for her? You're making this to be too complicated. The elder was about to deny him when his eyes suddenly widened. Wait a minute. Yes. The kite. There was a boy at the orphanage who was very close to Fang Yu. The boy was such a chatterbox. I believed he suffered from some kind of illness as well. He had a tendency to repeat the same thing. It was fine the first few times, but hearing him repeat the same thing every day would drive anyone nuts. So, it was the boy who found Fang Yu? Yes, Fang Yu has a bad memory, and she would forget what the boy repeated the next day. Every day was like a new day for her. With the prompt from Chen Ge, the guard finally started to remember things from back then. The two of them should have been friends, but they had different destinies. As Fang Yu got older, her illness worsened, but the boy's illness became better as he got older. But even after the boy became normal, he liked to stay with Fang Yu. He was three years older than Fang Yu, and whenever anyone dared to bully Fang Yu, he would be the first one to defend her. But what does that have to do with a kite, and where is that boy now? Chen Gu had a feeling that the ghost he was looking for was that boy. I cannot remember which year it was, but that year, the teachers took the children from the orphanage for a spring outing. They were flying kites at the dam in eastern Zhejiang. The boy and Fang Yu's kites both got lost in the woods. They both went searching for it, but the boy got lost, and we only found Fang Yu, who'd fainted. The boy got lost? Chen Ge frowned. If the boy had gotten lost, his trail might have gone cold. After Fang Yu woke up, we asked her what happened. She said that she and the boy went into the woods to find the kites. They saw a path that led to a house that was surrounded by flowers, and the laughter of many children came from inside it. The kites dropped on the fence of the house. When they reached for the kites, a group of unknown kids came to grab them, wishing to drag them into the house. At the last moment, the boy pushed Fang Yu out of the way before he was dragged through the door, and he closed the door from the inside. The elder's words might not have meant anything to other people, but it was different for Chen Gu. He had been to the little house with flowers next to the eastern Zhejiang's dam before. At the time, he had been studying at primary school, and it was the first year anniversary after he moved from eastern Zhejiang to western Zhejiang. His parents had forbidden him from going to eastern Zhejiang, but that day was an exception because it was a school field trip. It was at the eastern Zhejiang Dam, and it was the same house with the flowers and children laughter inside the woods. Chen Gu managed to survive that ordeal was thanks to the doll that he had made, which he carried with him at the time. Director Luo's daughter was living inside the doll, and she was now New Century Park's guardian spirit. It should be the same place. Chen Gu did not expect Fang Yu and the boy to have been to that place as well. Their past had somehow crossed his own past. The object that I have drawn this time does not appear to be that simple. Chen Gu picked up the backpack, but he did not act rashly. If you don't mind, I still need one more thing from you. Say it. The teacher had a good impression of Chen Gu. She believed that Chen Gu was a very kind and loving person. Can you find me the information on the boy? I have a date here. I believe it is his birthday. Chen Gu turned the picture around. The date written on the back was December 21st. I will try my best, but please don't get your hopes up. Thank you for your help. After saying goodbye to the teacher and the old guard, he opened the umbrella, swung the backpack over his shoulder, and ran out of the children's home. It is not too late to take revenge for the incident that happened to my primary school self. He did not stop for rest. He hailed a cab to Eastern Zhejiang's dam. Whenever I come to this kind of isolated place, the weather is horrible. It's either raining or howling with winds. The taxi drove away quickly after dropping Chen Go off outside the dam. He walked by the roadside for a long time with the umbrella. The memory of his childhood was blurry, but thankfully, the surroundings had not changed that much. The dam water rippled quickly, and the rain pelted his body. The surroundings were dark, but thanks to his yin-yang vision, even without a light, 
he could see clearly, and it appeared like Chen Gu had melted into the darkness. I remember walking into these woods. Chen Gu had no idea what had happened around the dam for the past decade, but this place had gotten even more deserted than before. The few locals that stayed here had moved away, and the woods had expanded to cover the mountain. Activating the recorder and flipping through the comic to summon the headless woman and the boy with the stench, Chen Gu finally made his trek into the woods. The raindrops fell on the leaves, and it created a rhythmic sound in Chen Ji's ears. The world inside the woods seemed to be a different world compared to outside. Not too far into the woods, Suin appeared silently beside Chen Gu. Chen Gu did not call his name, but he appeared on his own. This meant that he had sensed something dangerous, and the thing could have killed Chen Gu before he had the chance to appear. There was nothing strange around them, but the few red specters acted strangely, like the danger was hidden around them. The leaves danced in the wind, and the rain slid down the leaf veins. Chen Gu walked for quite a while in the woods until he lost track of the passage of time. The deeper he went into the woods, the lower the temperature and the quieter it became. Suin led the group. Red blood mixed with the rain. He moved away the rotten branches, and a well-beaten path appeared before them. Wilted flowers ran down both sides of the path, and at the end of the road a grey little house could be seen through the gaps in the trees. When I was small, I came here with my own handmade doll. You didn't kill me, only heavily injured the doll. I have always been a fair person. Today, I will not kill you, but I will beat you to your last breath and then take you away in the comic. In the raining night, the few red specters followed behind Chen Gu as they moved quietly forward. Not everyone can discover this place. If not for Suin leading the way, I probably wouldn't have found it so quick. As he approached the little house, Chen Ji's memory started to overlap with real life. What he had forgotten surfaced in his mind, and his memory had never been so clear before. Be careful. He had almost been killed there, so Chen Gu could not be more careful. At the same time, though, he felt as if he was getting closer to the truth. The fence of the house was toppled over, and moss grew over it. There were many empty vases left in the yard. The vases were interesting. They were the same size, and they would fit the skull of an adult perfectly. Other than the vases, there were some toys left outside in the yard. There was a broken wooden horse, a rusted seesaw, and a swing missing a rope. Chapter 983, Monster Carrying the Altar This place seems to have been abandoned for a long time already. It was a good thing that it was abandoned. That meant that no children would be harmed again. Walking down the muddy path, Chinga pushed open the door of the grey house. A horrible stench rushed out from inside the house. Chen Ji's nostrils twitched. He stood at the door and did not go in. I once smelled this in Liwan City. It's a very unique smell and hard to describe. It is not as thick as the smell of decay, but it contains a chill to it as if after you suck it into your lungs, your whole body will shiver. Using his inyang vision, Chen Gu looked into the room. Most of the furniture had been destroyed and the floor was littered with broken plates and torn children's clothes. This house didn't look like this at the beginning. Chen Gu looked at the dilapidated room, but another image appeared in his mind. It was this same room, but it was surrounded by the laughter of children. Light blue and light pink wallpaper was pasted on the walls. The table was not high, and it was filled with toys and delicious food. Has the ghost who once stayed here left? Chen Gu was about to walk into the room when his phone suddenly vibrated. The caller ID showed an unknown caller. I have both Inspector Lee and Captain Yan's numbers, so this should not be the police. Who would call me at this moment? He accepted the call, and a boy's voice came through the line. Chen Gu, when will you bring me home? Fan Yu? Chen Gu was confounded. Mr. Chen, it's me. We just met, not long ago. Another familiar voice appeared. It was the teacher from the children's home. Fan Yu, let me talk to Mr. Chen for a moment. Did you discover something? Chen Gu had left his number with the children's home, 
so he was not surprised that they would contact him. But Fan Yu, who did not like to speak, voluntarily called him by his name. Other than surprise, he was quite happy. We found something huge. All the files and medical treatment files before the children's home was taken over by the government were locked inside the warehouse. We searched for information related to Fan Yu, and we realized that the information about a child in their class was missing. The information for one of the children is lost? Yes, it's like his presence has been wiped out. You might not believe this, but according to the research we've done, there is always one person missing in the total count. In the class picture, there is a boy's face that is blurred out, just like the picture that you showed us. The teacher had given Chen Gu a valuable hint. I just called a few seniors who worked at the orphanage back then, and everyone remember this chatty boy. They all know about him, but no one can remember what he looks like. Everyone has forgotten what he looks like? Not only his looks, even his name and age. Other than that, did you find any other clues? I heard from one of the seniors that the boy used to be very chatty when he was young, and he slowly became normal after he grew up. Everyone thought that he had gotten better, but that was not the case. The teacher had revealed another secret. His illness had actually gotten more serious. But after he grew old, he was wise enough to understand that people did not like when he ran his mouth off, so he tried so hard to suppress his nature. The senior once saw that the boy would often run to an unoccupied corner and talk to himself like he was unloading the words that he couldn't say before others. Other than that, he formed the habit of keeping a diary. She once stole a look at it, and the diary was filled to the brim with words, but none of them made any sense. It was impossible to tell what the boy was trying to express. Is it possible to find that diary? That will be hard. I'll try to make some more calls. If I find anything, I'll call you back. The teacher hung up. Chin Gu stood at the door and looked at the house that was different from how he remembered. No one can remember his name and looks. Why is that? Almost everyone had forgotten him except Fang Yu, who had the poorest memory. She had been looking for him. After entering the room, the smell thickened. The first floor was for the children to play, so Chin Gu did not find anything there. With Su Yin by his side, he climbed to the second floor. When he came to the wooden steps, Chin Gu covered his nose. The unique smell came from the second floor. Let's go up together. The wooden steps had been built many years ago. They creaked noisily when he walked up them, and it felt like the stairs would crumble at any moment. As they moved up the steps, Chin Gu realized that the steps started to have words carved into them. They appeared to be dug out with bloody fingernails. Fang Yu? The handwriting on the steps became more intense. When Chinga reached the second floor, his eyes widened, and he was stumped. The floor, ceiling, walls, every crook and corner was filled with the name Fang Yu. At that moment, not far from Chinga was a man who was lying on the ground, using his bloody finger to grate at the ground. He was so fully focused that he did not notice Chen Gu. He was kneeling on the ground, carrying an altar on his back. The altar looked similar to the one that he had seen at the futuristic theme park, but the mud statuette inside this altar was not decapitated. Furthermore, it did not have Chen Ji's name, but instead, it was covered in Fang Yu's name. Chapter 984 Special Power Be Careful of the Altar He's Carrying the altar from the futuristic theme park had appeared again. Chinga seriously suspected that there were more altars hidden around eastern Zhejiang. A specter beyond the red specter is a demon god. I can understand building an altar for one, but why would they place a mud statuette inside the altars? The mud statuettes should have been made by the same person. The handicraft was rough, like they were made by children, and the shape of a human was barely discernible. Altar, statuette, who is behind all this? They seem to be targeting children. Is there a ghost that specifically feeds off children in this world? When Chingu was thinking, the man kneeling on the ground finally noticed him. The hand stopped moving, and he slowly turned his face to reveal a featureless face. It was like a piece of white paper that had nothing on it. 
On a rainy night, in a room, carved with names, a faceless monster, knelt, guarding an altar. If not for Suin, Chen Gu would have run away when the man lifted his head. Since there was no face, Chen Gu could not tell his emotions and could not predict his next move. The monster had no ears, so Chen Gu could not tell whether he could hear him or not. The monster had no mouth, so the most basic communication was impossible. After a temporarily pause, the monster suddenly pushed his hands against the ground and charged at Chen Gu on all fours. Suin. Even before the order from Chen Gu, Suin had already stepped in front of Chen Gu. His upper body leaned forward, and black capillaries appeared on the back of his hand as he held the monster's head back. Blade like fingers cut into the monster's face. The skin was cut through, but no blood leaked out. Black threads crawled out from the monster's wound and curled around Su Yin's fair hand. A curse? Each thread was marked with a wailing human face. This was similar to what Chen Gu had seen when he encountered the shadow in Liwan City. Such a venomous curse hid under a pure, featureless face. I should have known that the evilest spirit would often hide under the purest appearance. Su Yin was not familiar with dealing with curses, but Chen Gu had one specter who was. He took out the pair of red heels from his backpack and placed them on the ground. You seem to feed on curses. Give this one a taste. See if it matches your appetite. Keeping the headless woman by his side, Chen Gu did not give the faceless monster any chance. He summoned Su Yin, the red high heel, and the stench at the same time. Surrounded by three red specters, the faceless monster was immediately cornered. Threads of blood vessels covered the space around him like spiderweb, but they were as sharp as a blade. The web surrounded the monster, and if he tried to move, his body would be shredded into pieces. That did not mean that the monster had surrendered, though. He did not seem to possess self-consciousness and would not feel pain or sadness. Even though the wounds on his body increased, he continued to attack the three red specters. This man is not a red specter, but he is surprisingly tough. He appears to have been given some kind of command to guard the altar. Chen Gu had interacted with so many specters that he spotted the problem immediately. Ignore him for now. Take down the altar, but be careful to not break the mud statuette inside it. When the target changed from the monster to the altar, the house started to change. The names carved in the building started to bleed, and in just a few seconds, the whole second floor was dyed red. The smell in the air thickened, and the monster started to struggle. He tried to tear through the web of blood vessels, causing his body to be covered in ghastly wounds. Endless black threads seeped out from the wounds and gathered together to wrap around the altar like a tongue. Chin Gu thought that he would have an easy win with four red specters, but as time moved forward, things became more complicated. The curses all rushed toward the red high heels. As the number of wounds on the monster increased, the curse that came out from his body became scarier. The red high heel that was covered in bandages became the monster's main attack target. If that was all, Chen Gu would not have minded it. The curse of the entire second floor could only stop the red high heels. Su Yin, the stench, and the headless woman were not targeted by the curse. With three red specters on his side, Chen Gu would still win. The difference between a baleful specter and red specter could not be overcome. Even for Yan Danian, who could control many specters at the same time, he was only a lesser red specter. Soon, however, Chinga realized that something was wrong. The stench and suin that attacked the faceless man were getting weird, and the headless woman next to him was acting strange as well. The stench of blood thickened. Other than the red high heels, the three red specters stopped hiding their bloody presence and show off their bloodiest side. Is there danger around us? Have they sensed something dangerous? The room was still the same. With ghost ear, in yang vision, and spirit ear, Chin Gu was sure that there was nothing coming toward them. They were the only ones there. Why would they act this way if there's no danger? After staying for some time at the haunted house, these red specters would hide their natural presence out of habit. 
They would try to forget about their past pain and despair and used a new method to accompany Chin Gu. Of course, this had not been achieved overnight. It was done step by step with Chen Gu, building mutual trust. But now, the trust appeared to have been severed by something, and the most precious thing had been shattered. A chill ran down his spine. The way the headless woman looked at Chen Gu became confused. Red and pale colors twirled in her eyes. Something was influencing her, causing her to forget who Chen Gu was. If it was not Chen Gu standing before her, but a normal person, what would she have done? What would a normal red specter, suffering from endless despair do, in that moment? The answer was quite clear. Chen Gu tried to communicate with the headless woman, trying to help her keep her sense, but the effect was lacking. The headless woman was staying far away from the faceless monster and the altar, so she was not affected that much, but Suin and the stench who were reaching to take out the statuette were different. Their conditions were worse. Ghastly faces appeared on their bloody clothes, and the two red specters were on the edge of going on a rampage. This monster has a power that can affect red specters? Chinga had not experienced this before. Even Yen Danian, who was recognized by the Black Phone to be the strongest specter under the red specters, could not influence a red specter that much. The consciousness of these three red specters has been affected. The faceless monster's power can influence a red specter's consciousness, huh? No, based on the situation with the headless woman, the way she looked at me turned unfamiliar, like she had forgotten who I am. Chinga felt unsettled, and a speculation surfaced in his mind. The monster's power allows him to dilute certain memories? Chapter 985, The Second Mud Statuette The reason Chen Gu could think of that was due to Fang Yu. As Fang Yu grew older, her memory became worse. The monster's power should be related to memory. With the aid from the altar and the curse, his power gained some sort of improvement. Chen Gu found the key immediately. All the curses in the room rushed toward the red high heels. So, it's clear that he knew his power is weakest on the red high heels but why would the red high heels be immune to his power? Does this mean his power is a kind of curse itself? Regardless of the reason, Chinga knew that he could not allow this to drag on any longer. The man gave everything to protect the altar, so if Chingu wanted to turn this around, he had to target the altar. Suin. Remove the altar from the man. Hearing Chin Ji's voice, the pain in Su Yin's eyes intensified. He forced himself to grab at the edge of the altar, but once his hand landed on the altar, something unexpected happened. The mud statuette inside the altar suddenly opened its eyes. The death characters inside the altar started to bleed, and the statuette's chest area where the name Fang Yu was carved started to crack. When the statuette opened its eyes, other than the red high heels, all the other red specters became more crazed. They seemed to be reliving their despair, re-experiencing that painful memory. Wounds appeared on Su Yin's clothes like a blade was trying to split him in half. The headless woman held her neck like there was an invisible gash around her neck. The worst was the boy with the stench. His body kept growing, and his eyes were filled with black blood. The conditions of the three red specters became more serious. This was out of Chen Ji's expectations. Only a demon god should be able to wipe away the memory of three red specters at the same time. This monster's ability affects memories, and with the aid of the mud statuette inside the altar, he is able to wipe away red specters' memory temporarily. Even at this moment, Chen Gu kept his composure. This effect should be temporary. When he stops using his power or when the mud statuette inside the altar is destroyed, the red specters will recover their memories. The memory wipe was temporary, but even so, it placed Chin Gu in a dangerous situation. Red specters who were reliving their hatred and despair might kill Chin Gu directly. The monster's power is getting stronger, and the condition of Su Yin and the rest is getting worse. Chin Gu had two choices. The first was to wait. The statuette had started to crack. This power was placing a lot of burden on the statuette. 
When the statuette crumbled, the monster's power would be neutralized, but this choice was basically handing his life over to others. Chin Good did not like that, so he chose the second option, which was to find way to remove the mud statuette from the altar himself. I regret not bringing the hammer with me. After a few days' peace, I become too careless. I must learn from this. The second choice was dangerous, but Chen Gu decided to take this risk. Be it Su Yin, the stench, or the headless woman, they were Chen Ji's family. Seeing them in such pain, Chen Gu felt like he had to do something. I have gone through so much to help them see the light in this world, and you wish for them to forget that? Chen Gu did not want the Red Spectres to relive the worst periods of their lives. He used his Yin Yang vision to follow the trace of the black threads. All the curses are going after the red high heels. There is no curse between the stench and Suin, and the monster is pressed to the ground, so he shouldn't be able to attack me. The inside of the altar is filled with the word death. The statuette is stained with some black blood. I must stay away from these two things. Chingo looked into the altar that was open. If I knock into the altar from the side, perhaps I can knock it off the monster or knock the statuette out from inside the altar. If this continued, even if one red specter went on a rampage, Chingo might be injured in the process. He had to take this risk before the red specter's memory was completely removed. Taking one step forward, Chingo suddenly picked up speed to rush toward the altar. Before he made the next move, the monster pressed onto the ground suddenly raised his wounded face. Seeing that faceless face, Chin Gu was confounded for a moment, but he snapped out of it. He rammed heavily into the altar. The statuette inside the altar teetered. The altar was much heavier than Chin Gu had anticipated. He failed to tip the altar over. A thick scent of blood mixed with a horrible stench drifted over. A giant hand slowly rose, and the boy who had grown several times in size set his eyes on Chen Gu. Chen Gu appeared in his blood-red eyes, but compelled by pain and anger, the Chen Gu in his eyes slowly changed into an unfamiliar middle-aged man. Father, don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. The raised arm slammed toward Chen Ji's head. A man's dried skull appeared in the middle of the pain. The red specter moved too fast, so Chin Gu did not have the chance to evade. The hand grew larger in his eyes when a figure suddenly stood before him. Bang! Blood spurted everywhere. Ten fingers as sharp as a blade cut off the stench's hand from his wrist. Is it painful? The lanky Suin lowered his arms. The wounds on his body were completely open. His face was twisted from pain and there was only madness and despair in his eyes. He had lost his sanity, but even so, he knew to protect Chin Gu. Without moving an inch, the red heart in his chest kept beating. Many blood vessels bloomed inside the room like a flower in the middle of a nightmare. Suppression. Absolute suppression that belonged to Suin. There was a crisp sound that came from inside the altar. Perhaps due to Su Yin's resistance, there was a clear crack that crossed through the statuette. Chen Gu did not expect Su Yin to still guard him even after he had lost his memory. Perhaps from a certain moment, he had become the only person that Su Yin could trust in this world. Not wanting to lose this opportunity, Chen Gu rammed into the altar again. The cracked statuette fell into the altar's door, and that seemed to affect the death characters on the wall. The headless woman who was the furthest away was the first to recover her memory. She remembered Chen Ji's earlier request. She blinked to appear before the altar and took the statuette out from it. The moment the statuette left the altar, all the characters in the room returned to normal. The curse that surrounded the red high heels started to disperse. The headless woman held the mud statuette. The faceless monster struggled on the ground, but all his limbs were pulled off by Suin. The boy also returned to normal. The broken hand dissolved into blood vessels. Looking at his new arm, there was regret in his eyes. As if to show his apology, the boy picked up the monster from the ground. He was about to kill the man when he saw that there was another face hidden under the monster's wounded face. 
the face was wreathed inside the curse. His eyes were screwed shut, and his expression was pained. Slow down. Can you guys remove the man from the curse wrapped around him? Chapter 986, She's Forgotten Her Name, But She Hasn't Forgotten You, The Most Dangerous Thing in the Room Was the Mud Statuette. Now that it was in the headless woman's clutches, there was no victory chance for the man. The faceless monster had almost killed Chen Gu even though he was under the protection of four red specters. Yes, the altar and statuette had played a big factor, but it also proved how powerful the faceless man's own power was. He could wipe away certain memory, and if used wisely, it could come in handy for Chen Gu. Specters with such power are very rare, and the crucial point is that he's not a red specter. Should he become one, his power will only get scarier. From how Chen Gu saw it, if Yen Danian was the most powerful specter under red specters, the faceless man would be the second most powerful. The specters that I draw from the wheel are getting better in quality. After consuming the remaining curse, the red high heels and the stench worked together to pull the man out from the faceless monster's shell. There were cursed threads stuck to his body like he had been stuck inside a cocoon of curses earlier. When all the threads disappeared, the man collapsed to the ground. He was thin and did not look too old. In fact, he looked like he had just reached puberty. Can you understand me? Chin Gu squatted next to the man. After the man was cleansed of the curse, his body faded like he could disappear at any moment. I did not come to save you out of pure sympathy, I'm here on someone's behalf. The man kept his eyes closed like he had had this speech before. He used to being made a fool, and he had given up hope. It's Fang Yu who told me to come find you. She tattooed your name all over her body, and she visits the city park every night, sitting on the bench to wait for you. Chen Ji's voice became louder. Now that the park is getting demolished, last night should be the last time she could go there to wait for you. The man's expression did not change too much, but his eyelids fluttered. Fang Yu's condition is getting worse. Perhaps before she dies, her biggest wish is to see you one last time. She has many things she wants to tell you. You are her best and only friend. Chin Gug did not know which sentence finally cut through the man. Perhaps it was the mention of Fang Yu potentially dying. The eyelids twitched before the man finally opened his eyes. His pupils were incredibly unique, they were like a cat's. There were two vertical lines in the middle of his pupils. Look at them too long, and he might be sucked into them. Fang Yu, Fang Yu. Repeating that name, the man slowly returned to normal. After so many years, perhaps it was this name that had kept his spirit lingering. After a long time, the man lifted his head to look at Chin Gu, with his lips moving. She has not forgotten me? Once she remembers me, the person will go find her. That is the curse that person left on me. Her memory is horrible, but even if she has forgotten her own name, she hasn't forgotten you. It was a simple statement, without any embellishment. After Chinga said that, the man lowered his head slowly and closed his eyes again. For this past ten years, she has been reliving the day that you left, she experiences the same pain every day. Even if you don't do this for yourself, at least do it for you. Do you really think your choice is best for her? Chinga sat next to the man. He kept the man alive because he believed that the man's power was very unique. However, he also wanted to take him to meet Fang Yu. I am protecting her. A dangerous specter has his eyes on Fang Yu. You don't understand how scary he is. You don't get it. Is that specter a shapeless shadow? Chin Gu paid attention because the man was giving information about the altar. He is like a person's shadow, but he can grow, and he has a physical body. The crucial thing is that he's despairingly strong. The man lay on the ground, and tiredness laced through his voice. The man is looking for a suitable candidate to possess their body. When I was playing with Fang Yu, Fang Yu often heard someone calling her name. The voice came from the eastern side. Initially, I didn't mind it until the day we went to play at the eastern Jiujiang Dam. Fang Yu heard the voice again. 
she seemed to have lost herself. She kept walking into the jungle, and I followed behind her. Then we saw this house. The door opened, and there were many children inside staring at us with scary smiles. I felt that something was wrong, so I dragged Fang Yu away, but she seemed frozen to the spot, and both of us were pulled into the house. At the time, I didn't think too much of it. At the last moment, I pushed Fang Yu out and slammed the door shut. Chapter 987 A Bright Choice The man's body was fading like his spirit was leaving. He was not long for this world. It was only a matter of time before his spirit dispersed into nothingness. My nightmare started then. The house was surrounded by fresh flowers and filled with laughter, but it was really a house of nightmares. We were all the shadow's playmates, but everyone's laughter was forced. The shadow planted the curse on everyone, but since I let Fang Yu go, he hated me a lot, and for that, he planted many curses on me. I suffered more pain than anyone else, but that also made me stronger than the rest. In a way, the shadow didn't act like a specter. He was in fact growing like a real person. Eventually, he stopped having any use for imaginary friends. What he needed was a guardian. He slaughtered all his previous family because he only needed one survivor. After surviving the most pain and curses, I was the last survivor, the shadow seemed to like that a lot. At the time, I didn't know why, but later, I realized that it was all part of his plan. The shadow kept coming and going until the day he brought this altar. The man glanced behind him. There was a mud statuette inside it, and it had Fang Yu's name on it. When I saw her name, I had a bad feeling. I needed to leave this place and tell Fang Yu to leave Jiu Jiang, but everything was within the shadow's calculations. He purposely let me get close to Fang Yu so that the curse could be planted on her and her body could be made into his. The man's words surprised Chen Gu. That was something Chen Gu did not expect. The shadow wanted to turn Fang Yu into his own body? Yes, there appeared to be something else inside his body. The thing possessed his memory and emotions. He seemed like he wanted to use Fang Yu's body to nurture that thing. A ghost fetus? Yes, I think I heard the shadow mention something like that. This time, it was the man's turn to get shocked. How is it possible that you know that? You don't need to know how I know that. Just keep on telling your story. Chin Gu kept his focus sharp and pointed. He refused to miss even the smallest word. This was the chance that he was given to get as much information as he could on the shadow and the ghost fetus. The shadow appeared to be being chased by someone or something, but as he continued to grow, he stopped caring about those things that had been chasing him. Of the entire Zhejiang, there was one place that he did not dare to go, Western Zhejiang. The more Chingo listened to the man's story, the more he felt like the shadow in the story was the shadow that he had encountered in Liwan City. But the shadow in the man's story still had not separated himself from the ghost fetus, and his power was at its prime. The shadow searched all over Zhejiang and found nine altars in total. The one behind me is one of them. The nine altars contain nine mud statuettes that he personally made with his own hands. Each mud statuette relates to one person. Each represents one of his bodies. Wait a minute, I do not think I get what you are saying. What do you mean by each mud statuette represents one of his bodies? Does it mean that I will have killed the shadow if I manage to destroy all the mud statuettes? Chen Gu now had found three altars. There were two altars inside the futuristic theme park, but one of them did not contain a mud statuette, so that was probably a fake. They probably made a replica of the altar from the real altar that the shadow or someone from the management at the futuristic theme park had moved into the reincarnation haunted house. I have no idea what will happen after you destroy all of the mud statuettes, but I would advise you not to do that. The shadow is different from any other specter. You won't be able to kill him. No one is able to kill him. The man did not hold back any information. After all, he had nothing to lose. He was going to die from the curse that the shadow had planted on his body. He told Chingu everything he knew. I have been carrying this altar for many years. 
Eventually, I noticed that the shadow left his presence on the altar, like the altar is an extension of the shadow itself. I suspect that the shadow is using the altars to have the mud statuettes inside them get used to his presence so that it will be more convenient for him to attach the ghost fetus to the candidates. His voice was getting softer and softer, his breath getting ever weaker. This altar used to be very scary, but some time ago, I don't know what happened to the shadow, but the presence around the altar suddenly weakened, and it became a lot more normal. This period that the man mentioned should be around the time when Shin Guk cooperated with Dr. Gao to deal with the shadow in Liwan City. Looks like the shadow's death has caused a certain influence on the ghost fetus. Chin Gu stood up and looked into the altar. The inside walls of the altar had the word death carved all over then, but different from the altars at the futuristic theme park, there were nine blood-soaked paper dolls stuffed inside this altar at the old house. Yet another nine paper dolls? There was nothing on the paper dolls. They had no names, and they all looked about the same. Nine altars, nine mud statuettes, and nine paper dolls. What is the ghost fetus planning to do with all these? Chen Ji's brows creased in thought. He tried to put himself in the shoes of the ghost fetus and see things from his perspective. If I were the ghost fetus, at the most important moment when I'm about to reincarnate into a living person, I will ensure that there is no interruption from the outside world. Chen Ge felt like he had touched upon an important clue, but he did not have the time to figure it out because the man on the ground was about to fade away. Chin Gu turned his focus back to the man and tried his best to help him. You do not need to care about me. Just leave me be. The shadow's curse still lingers on my body. When I exposed this information to you, it was destined that I would fade away and die. The man seemed to have accepted his fate. I thought I would surrender to the curse in the end, would be forced to do something that would harm Fang Yu, but this, this is the best ending that I could have hoped for. You have injured both me and my employees, and now you wish to leave just like that? Do you think that is possible? Do you think I will allow that to happen? Chen Ge had the red high heels look after the man and help him pull out the curse from his body little by little. There are people who still remember you in this world. You are her anchor that attaches her to this world, so no matter what, you have to go and meet her. As I told you earlier, I cannot. The man's attitude suddenly changed. Some fight had returned to the man. The moment she remembers anything about me, the shadow will trigger the curse that he has been planted on both of us, and she will die. The man was very adamant about this. His protectiveness over Fang Yu was probably what had kept him going for so long under the shadow's torture and the curse that was planted on him. I told you earlier, the shadow tricked me. When I saw Fang Yu's name on the mud statuette, I sneaked out to find Fang Yu. I am a ghost. Being under the sun is like jumping into a pit of fire, but to suppress the curse on my body from harming her, I insisted on meeting her during the day. The orphanage was no longer safe, the entire Jiujiang was not safe. She had to leave. I knew about what had happened to her and I knew how difficult it will be for her to just get up and leave, so I tried my best to teach her how to survive on her own, how to live independently without relying on anyone else. I taught her to sew everything that she needed to do daily on her clothes. I tried to make her cultivate the habit of putting her wallet, ID, and contact number into her pocket before she slept. Everything I did, I did so that she could survive just fine without me but I did not expect that was exactly what the shadow expected me to do. Those who were selected by him appeared to have to agree to cooperate with him to complete the final step, and the shadow was using me. The man had lost the energy to struggle. There was anger, regret, disappointment, self-reprimand, and despair in his eyes. When the trace of the curse started to appear on Fang Yu, I did not know what to do. The only thing I could do was make her forget me and that should be the simplest thing that she could do. I cleaned away my information from the orphanage and wiped away my faces from all the pictures. When I met Fang Yu at the park for the last time, I told her a lie. Every time she met me, she would have to ask for my name again. After hearing my answer, she would be very happy because it would have proven that she had not forgotten me. 
But on that last day, when she asked for my name, I did not tell her my real name, instead, I said her name. I told her that my name was Fangyu. This was because I hoped that she would always remember herself and would never lose sight of herself. We stayed at the park until very late that night. That night, I did not walk her home. I watched her walk past the junction, and I stayed where I was at the park. The story the man told filled the last piece of the puzzle, and Fang Yu's whole life appeared fully in Chen Ji's mind. Fang Yu and the boy had grown up together at the orphanage. One had a very bad memory, and she would always forget the past, the other had a language problem and would keep repeating the same thing. The two formed a bond and became best friends. Everything was fine until they went to the eastern Jiujiang Dam, when the boy sacrificed himself to save Fang Yu. Traumatized by that event, Fang Yu's condition worsened. But it was also during this period that boy fell into the shadow's plot. He sneaked out from the little house by the dam and wished to take Fang Yu away from Jiujiang. Based on the recollection of the old guard at the children's home, it was during this period that Fang Yu disappeared from the children's home. When he asked Fang Yu, Fang Yu only mentioned the word kite. Thinking back, on the day the boy disappeared, it was on the day of the spring tour for the orphanage at the eastern Jiujiang Dam. Everyone was flying kites. The kite itself was an important clue, but the guard did not think too deep into its significance. He could not make the link. The boy knew that he was carrying the curse and could not accompany Fang Yu anymore, so he kept trying to help Fang Yu learn how to live independently. That should be the happiest moment they had spent together, but it did not last long. After the boy found out about the shadow's plan, the only thing he could do was make Fang Yu forget about him. The boy returned to the small house and must have been tortured endlessly by the shadow. The shadow planted so many curses on him and turned him into a faceless monster. On the other hand, Fang Yu, whose memory became worse and worse, went to the small city park and waited for the boy to appear every night. Slowly but surely, she forgot who she was waiting for. She forgot the voice and the face of the person she was waiting for until there was only one name that was left in her mind, Fang Yu. Because that was the name that he had told her. Now, the park was about to get demolished. When she thought that she would never wait for that person to return, Chin Gu found her. Their story was not that beautiful, but it touched Chin Gu. He stood up and extended his hand toward the man lying on the ground. If you are worried about your curse harming Fang Yu, I will help you remove the curse. If you are worried that about revenge from the shadow and the ghost fetus, why not work with us to kill them? That way, no one will be able to harm the two of you anymore. The man did not think that Chen Gu could really harm the ghost fetus, he was just trying to console a dying spirit. The shadow that you are so afraid of has already been torn apart in Liwan City. Let me try to remember the exact date. Then, Chen Gu gave an accurate date, and it was that day that the shadow's presence on the altar had weakened. In his story, the man did not tell the exact date to Chen Gu but Chen Gu had named the exact date himself, only then did he realize that Chen Gu was not lying to him. His eyes wandered between Chen Gu and the four red specters. The man finally reached out to touch Chen Ji's hand. What do you want me to do? I will listen to you. Chapter 988, I'm sorry, but do you know Fang Yu? First, you need to follow me to meet Fang Yu. I have promised her that I will bring you to meet her. Chen Gu opened the comic. I believe that you want to meet her as well too, right? The man nodded. Yes, but I am afraid. You want to meet her, and she wants to meet you, that is enough. We will work together to overcome any difficulty on the way. Chen Gu communicated with Yan Danian and pulled the man into the comic. Taking out the black phone, Chen Gu had not received a new message. Even though the man agreed temporarily to listen to Chen Gu, he had not become an employee at the haunted house. That was probably because he did not completely believe Chen Gu. Let's go. This trip to the dam has reminded me that one can't be too careful. This period is a very sensitive period, the ghost fetus is about to be born, so I have to stay on my toes. 
Chinga felt like there was a need for him to keep Dr. Skullcracker's hammer on him at all times. He did not have any actual physical power that could threaten a ghost, but if he had the hammer, at least he had a chance to strike back. As the number of trial missions he had completed increased, Dr. Skullcracker's hammer changed. Thin threads of blood vessels appeared on the grip, and the blood grooves in the hammerhead had collected some deep dark substance. It will be inconvenient to bring the hammer around everywhere with me, but now is not the time to be concerned about that. Putting away the red high heels and the boy with the stench, Chin Gu and Suin once again returned to the altar. This time, without any other interruptions, they planned to give the altar a close study. The altar was definitely older than Chin Gu. The shadow had probably found it from some blasted place, and it was not made by the shadow himself. Perhaps there was originally some demon god that occupied the altar, but currently, the shadow has taken over their homes. Chen Gu was reminded of the painting that he had seen at the futuristic theme park, the completed evil demon that was constructed from the body parts of 24 other demons. If these nine paper dolls correspond to the nine missing evil demon pictures, can I establish that the ghost fetus is trying to use these nine paper dolls to construct his own body? The picture of the demon has appeared at many places before. Both Dr. Gao and Chang Wenyu knew about it. And now even the ghost fetus has dabbled with the use of this demon. It appears like this demon is a symbol of something important. Without any evidence and with too few clues, Chin Gu could only make some speculations. He wanted to take the altar home with him, but he was stopped by both Suin and the headless woman. Getting such a reaction from the red specters surprised Chin Gu. The altar that was filled with the death characters appeared to be a very cursed object. Without touching the altar, Chin Gu placed the mud statuette with Fang Yu's name on his own shadow. The black blood on the mud statuette slowly disappeared as if it was being absorbed by Chin Ji's shadow. There must be more than these few altars in Jiujiang. I will try my best to find more mud statuettes. Hopefully, that means Zhang Ye will be able to wake up earlier. Chen Gu was somewhat stressed inside even though he did not show it on the surface. Normally, after a red specter consumed another red specter, they would hibernate for a long time, but due to many various reasons, even after Zhang Ye had a feast, she would only need a short time to rest before she returned to normal. Other than that, there were times that she had awakened from her hibernation due to certain incidents like when they were at the school of the afterlife. Even though the shadow had been separated from the ghost fetus, the shadow himself was a top red specter. After he was split and ingested by Zhang Ye and Dr. Gao, Zhang Ye had awakened after a few days of hibernation, this caused serious damage to the red specter. Taking a tour around the house, after making sure Chen Gu did not miss any clues, he left the place. He was unable to get a taxi near the dam. To get back to the city as early as he could, Chen Gu raced down the highway. Finally, he ran into a van driver who was kind enough to drive him to the city. Chen Gu returned to the residential area where Fang Yu stayed at around 11.45 p.m. The sky was still drizzling and through the hazy yellowish glow from the streetlights, the scenery took on a sepia tone. Chenga had no idea which floor Fang Yu stayed at. He first knocked on the door of the elder, and then, with the elder leading the way, he went to the fourth floor. The fat auntie had not gone to sleep, she had been waiting for Chen Gu to come back with news. The doors were pushed open. The auntie's expression became very excited when she saw that it was Chen Gu. Did you find the person? Chen Gu first returned the umbrella to the auntie and then looked into the room. Is Fang Yu here? She lives in the innermost room. I'll get her. There is no need. Chen Gu took out the comic from his backpack. He walked to the bedroom door and knocked lightly on the door. I have found Fang Yu. The door was pulled open in that instant. Fang Yu, who was dressed in pajamas, stood at the door. Her exposed skin was tattooed with the name Fang Yu. The first impression it gave was horror, but as he looked at it longer, he felt something like pain and sadness. Where is he? Chen Ji's gaze leaped over Fang Yu and looked into the room. 
Inside the room that was not that big, all the items were neatly organized. There were paper notes stuck to wall, and the notes contained reminders that could not have been more normal for a person. Put on your clothes after waking up, brush your teeth, wash your face, place your identification card inside your wallet, place your wallet inside your left pocket. Fang Yu tried her best to live her life, repeating every day that was a new day for her. Taking one step forward into the room, Chin Guk closed the door and locked it. He pulled the curtains shut. Sniffing the scent of flower in the room, he reached out to switch off the light. With Yin Yang vision, Chin Gu could see Fang Yu clearly in the dark. Suddenly being placed in the darkness, Fang Yu was quite afraid. Flipping the comic pages, a man's figure appeared in the bedroom. The street light filtered through the curtain, and it shone a weak light into the room. The gentle light fell on the spot behind Chin Gu, and the silhouette of a man could just about be picked out. Ten years ago, when they parted at the junction, the man had retained the look from that day, and Fang Yu had been repeating the memory of that day. The man that appeared inside the room at that moment overlapped with the person from Fang Yu's memory. When they last met, Fang Yu had stood at the junction. She had turned back to look like usual, but she had failed to find the man who was supposed to stand there. She had stood alone at the junction before she was swallowed by the bustling city crowd. A decade had passed, but time did not seem to leave any trace on these two individuals. The room was very quiet. No one spoke, and it passed like that for several minutes. The man and Fang Yu suddenly looked at one another, and they both uttered the same name. Fang Yu. Fang Yu. Chin Gu very astutely walked to the corner and took out the pair of red high heels. Once the curse was triggered, he would have the red high heels suppress the man immediately. The room became quiet again. The two of them made one hell of a couple. One had retained his look from ten years ago but had experienced a torture that lasted for a decade, even though the other was no longer the young woman from ten years ago, her memory was stuck on that day from ten years ago. One had lived the past ten years suffering every single day in different kind of torment, but his appearance had remained the same, the other had whiled away ten years, with the decade leaving a clear toll on her physical body, but in her mind, only one single day had passed. I was unable to walk you home that day because I had something else to do. The man lowered his head like he did not want others to see that he was unable to control his emotions. You don't blame me, right? Fang Yu shook her head and she walked toward the man. When she took the first step forward, the man moved one step back. Fang Yu moved faster until she finally stood before the man. The distance of three meters took her ten years to complete. She raised both of her arms to give the man a tight hug like she wanted to grab him tight so that he would not escape from her again. When the hand touched the man's body, bitterness and chill came from the palms. The woman ultimately only managed to pull the hug around herself. Small dark threads crawled out from the man's body, and his face was locked in an ugly grimace. The many curses that the ghost fetus had planted in him were triggered, and he was trying his best to control himself. The black threads that were yelling with pain rushed at Fang Yu. Just as they were about to swallow Fang Yu, drops of blood dripped from the ceiling, and they sealed the curses in their path. I'm so sorry. The curse implanted at the deepest part of his soul was triggered. The man's body became more and more vague. He used his last shred of energy to whisper a final apology to Fang Yu. Then, his body shattered, and he was sucked back into the comic. Fang Yu stood blankly in the darkness. Her energy seemed to have left her, and she slowly dropped to the ground. The weak light shone on her face. The clock struck midnight, and Chen Gu walked to switch on the light in the room. Are you all ready? Hearing his voice, Fang Yu turned around. Her pair of red eyes looked at Chen Gu. Her lips moved, and the tears that she could not control started to slid down her face. I'm sorry, but do you know Fang Yu? Fang Yu appeared to have lost her memory again. Chen Gu helped move her to the bed and poured her a glass of water. I am good friends with Fang Yu. He will be busy for a little while, but when he is not so busy anymore, he will come visit you. 
Fang Yu, who was lying quietly in bed, looked at Chen Gu. For some reason, she had an implicit trust in this man, and she felt like he was not lying to her. For reasons that she could not explain, Fang Yu knew that this man beside her bed would not lie to her and would make things better soon. Get a good rest and try not to worry over unimportant things too much. What you need to do now is focus on taking good care of your body. I am sure Fang Yu will return soon. The body had just received a huge trauma. After one dropped down from such a high point in terms of emotion and agitation, it was easy to feel tired, so Fang Yu drifted off to sleep quite quickly. Chin Gu switched off the light and slunk out from the bedroom. The fat auntie was guarding outside the room. Is Xiaoyu feeling better? It sounded like she was very excited earlier. Have you really found that person? Yes, I have found him. Can you tell me where he is? The auntie looked like she was about to dole out justice on Fang Yu's behalf. A man just went and abandoned Xiao Yu because she lost her memory. We will go and get him now. I have to teach him a lesson, or else I will not rest easy tonight. The man has his own reason for staying away. The pain that he has suffered is no less than Fang Yu's suffering, Chen Gu said with a sad smile. Auntie, thank you so much for having taken care of Fang Yu for so long. I will come and visit her more often during this coming period. One day, I might even be able to cure Fang Yu's illness. You mean her weak memory? Yes. Chen Gu placed the comic inside the backpack. I won't disturb you anymore. See you later. Hey. You need to explain it clearer. And it is still raining. Take the umbrella with you. Carrying his backpack, he jogged out from the building. The rain fell on his body as Chin Gu rushed through the streets. The yellowish streetlights stretched his shadow as the man raced through the city that was already asleep. Before he left, he turned back to look at the apartment behind him. There are bad guys in the world, but there are quite a number of good guys as well. A city in the night hides many cruel and gory madmen, but there is also plenty of quaint and normal beauty. Taking a cab back to New Century Park, Chin Gu carried his backpack and went straight underground. Chapter 989, Life and Death Hide and Seek is Doctor Way Around? Chin Gu had the phone spirit Tong Tong summon the doctors from the underground morgue. I need you guys to examine this person. He is not doing so well. Flipping through the comic, Chin Gu released the man and the red high heels. Xiao Chen, the knowledge that we have accumulated is to help cure the living's illnesses. Even though in the spirit of research, we have started to inquire into ways of curing ghosts, the process of that is going very slowly. Dr. Wei looked at the man that was about to dissipate. The core that maintains the existence of a spirit is their fixation. Once that disappears, the ghost will cease to exist. This gentleman possesses a very strong fixation to this world but there is something else that has corrupted that fixation, causing him to waver in his conviction. This is a very rare situation indeed. What's corrupting his fixation is the curse that was left behind by the ghost fetus. Chinga knelt down next to the man. Have some faith in yourself, okay? I will help you remove the curse so that you will be able to guard Fan Yu again, and you will never be separated from her anymore. The man's body was wavering. He chuckled faithlessly. I am really appreciative of your help, letting me see Fang Yu one last time, but you saw what happened earlier. As long as I am alive, I will harm Fang Yu. Furthermore, even if you manage to remove the curse, the ghost fetus will still come get me. Is it really worth it for you to anger the ghost fetus just for me? I am not going to lie to you. Between myself and the ghost fetus, one of us will eventually have to die. Now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Without you, he will want to kill me, and helping you is essentially me helping myself. Chen Gu was not lying. He was exuding sincerity with his every word. Cooperate well with this red specter to deal with your curse. After the curse has been removed, we will work together to deal with the ghost fetus. Actually, you can just toss me away now. I have the ghost fetus curse on me. He will come after me the moment he is able to do. 
Please don't worry about things that are beyond you. Focus on removing the curse from your body. When we face off against the ghost fetus, I am afraid no one will even have any time to pay attention to you. After saying that, Chin Goat stood up and prepared to leave. Wait a minute. The man collapsed on the ground. He hesitated for a long time before he decided to tell Chinga something. We do not have much time left. The ghost fetus has spent ten years looking for the perfect candidate. He is going to come soon. The ghost fetus has found the perfect candidate? Chinga stopped moving. What do you mean? The shadow's fixation is to become a living person. He wants to have a family, to possess happiness, to enjoy everything a normal person could, but at the same time, he hates everything that is good in the world. To complete his own desire, he has already parted from the ghost fetus and kept burying the fetus seed into many children. But most of the children were unable to suffer the pain that was brought upon them by the ghost fetus. Only those who were born in a family of nightmares, children who had already gotten used to the nightmare, had a trace of opportunity to assimilate the ghost fetus. Shadow, children, seeds? Chingu was reminded of the events that he had encountered in eastern Zhejiang before he started the mission in Liwan City. The memories were now being joined together to form a more logical timeline. The ghost fetus spent ten years in his search before finding nine children who could sustain his pain. The nine children correspond to the nine mud statuettes inside the nine altars. The man's voice was very weak, as if revealing these things would cause him great damage. The curse inside his heart was eating him up. This project took ten years to complete. The nine children are from different age groups, they have different personalities and appearances, and the ghost fetus is currently growing in one of them. When the man said that last sentence, black threads crawled out from his eyes and mouth. If not for the red high heels, who was an expert at dealing with curses, the man would have crumbled and disappeared already. Not long after the man said that, the black phone in Chen Ji's pocket started to vibrate. Taking out the phone and clicking on the app, Chen Gu clicked open the new message. Congratulations, Red Spectres favored, for obtained a new special specter, Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi, cursed a strong fixation, gifted him with an extremely rare power. He can deprive living humans and ghosts of their memories. He is brimming with potential. The Black Phone rarely praised the ghosts that Chen Gu had befriended, but for Zhang Yi, the Black Phone had stated quite clearly that he had a lot of potential. Looks like I need to spend more time in the future to try to upgrade Zhang Yi and Yan Danian into Red Spectres. Both of them have immensely scary powers, but one is being tortured alive by curses and the other has such low confidence in himself that the only thing he wants to do in life is draw. Chen Gu was about to put the phone away when he saw that there was an unread message on the black phone. The new employee tab for Zhang Yi has already been unlocked. Why is there another unread message? Chen Gu clicked on the message. He had just read the first few lines of it, and his expression dropped. When the curse inside the altar was broken, the ghost fetus became aware of your arrival. Four-star trial mission ghost fetus has been forcibly triggered. With the whole city as the stage, this is a life-or-death version of hide-and-seek. The nine altars represent nine children, and the ghost fetus is hiding inside one of them. You need to find him within nine nights, or you will definitely die once he turns into a ghost. Mission hint, lucky red specters favored, you are just one step away from finding out the whole truth. Reading the messages on the black phone, Chingu was frozen in place for a very long time. Chapter 990, Jiang Ming, it took Chingu 10 minutes just to digest the new information on the black phone. He had been silent, holding the phone. He knew that the ghost fetus was dangerous, and he knew that their conflict was inevitable, but he did not expect it to be so soon. Only nine days. If I can't find him in nine days, I will die. The black phone never lied, all the information it had given had proven to be true. The four-star trial mission has been forcibly triggered, but this mission is different from the school of the afterlife or any of the trial mission that I've done before. 
It doesn't have a fixed location and doesn't provide accurate information. It only gave me a general range, the entire city is the stage. Chinga frowned as he read the message on the black phone repeatedly. It was a four-star trial mission, but the introduction was so small, and the mission hint was only one sentence. The time limit is nine nights, and the phone specifically highlighted the nights. Does this mean that the children that are possessed by the ghost fetus will be weakened only at night? Chen Gu had played hide and seek many times in his life, but this would be the first time that he had placed his life on the line. At the moment I only know the number of altars and children. Finding the ghost fetus that might be anywhere within Jiujiang with this is too difficult. Chen Gu put away the black phone and took out his own phone. He opened the contact list. I have limited resources, and now is not the time to take this on alone. I need to mobilize all the forces that I can. Chen Gu first turned to Li Jing and Captain Yen. After cooperating multiple times, Jiu Jiang's law enforcement could be said to be Chen Ji's reliable backup support. The police are better than me at finding people. Now, I might need to clarify the uniqueness of these children and the possible danger that one might encounter during the search. The game had already started. After the black phone triggered the mission, an hourglass appeared on the mission page. After it turned nine times, the ghost fetus would go to find Chen Gu. The black phone said that I will definitely die, which means the ghost fetus is probably also a demon god. He has stolen nine altars and occupied them without the owner's permission. Perhaps the altar's owners have all been killed. The owners of the altar should be quite scary, but they were still no match for the ghost fetus. That proved that even among demon gods, the ghost fetus is a powerful one. Without any clues, Chen Gu could only make his own prediction. These nine days might be the only time I have left in my life. Chen Gu did not pull Zhang Yi back into the comic, but had Dr. Wei and the red high heels cure him. The curing was just the red high heels pulling the black threads that represent curses out from Zhang Yi's body. It was unknown how many curses the ghost fetus had planted on Zhang Yi's body. To help him, this was the only way. I'll leave him to you. Carrying the backpack, Chen Gu returned to the ground. When he passed the prop room, he grabbed the hammer and shoved it into his backpack. For the next nine days, I'll have to carry this with me. To not influence the work at the haunted house, Chen Gu custom made a wooden skullcracker's hammer for Xiao Gu, the actor of Dr. Skullcracker. After he was done, it was already 3 a.m. He returned to the staff break room, but he could not sleep, no matter what. It is hard to imagine that the four star mission has already started, but I will spend the first night sleeping at home. Chen Gu got out some paper to list down all the information that he knew. Now I have found three altars. One of them corresponds to Fang Yu. Based on Fang Yu's current condition, the ghost fetus is most likely not on her, so I can eliminate her. The second altar corresponds to me. There is a decapitated mud statuette with my name inside the altar, and it is covered in the word death. The ghost fetus hates me so much that anger and envy have caused him to lose his sanity. The futuristic theme park has two altars. If one is for me, who is the other one for? Initially, Chinga thought that the futuristic theme park only had one real altar and one fake, but he could not guarantee that to be true. The haunted house at the futuristic theme park was built under the insistence of a director Jiang. His adopted son, Jiang Ming, is about the same age as me. These are all suspicious points. The pair of father and son definitely know something. Perhaps they have done something to the altar without a mud statuette. With that in mind, Chen Gu activated the recorder to summon Suin and then flipped through the comic and summoned all the specters and spirits that he had found at the cursed Japanese house. Eerie wind gathered in the break room. The white cat dragged Xiao Xiao by her dress into the bedsheet. The cat and Xiao Xiao poked their eyes out from the darkness to observe the situation. The little girl from the Winchim and the grandson were the first to appear. They were holding hands like they were afraid of Chen Gu. Then the chair before the table slowly turned, and a sturdy-looking old man appeared. 
He was facing away from Chen Gu, refusing to show Chen Gu his face like in the black and white picture. The scent of blood thickened. Following a sad and resentful song, the woman in the stage costume appeared. Lian. The man turned his head slightly. The woman's body was flickering. She looked at the old man and started to move toward him. Do you think this is some dating game? Chen Go held the hammer and glared viciously at everyone in the room. I don't care about what you do in the future, but now I need you to answer a few questions honestly. His yin-yang vision swept the old man and the woman. He did not let the two children off the hook either. The scenario that you stayed in had an altar. Tell me everything you know about it. With Chen Ji's interrogation, he gained some important information from the old man. The woman in the costume had met the ghost fetus before. To protect the grandson and the girl, the woman had promised to help the ghost fetus protect the altar. In a way, she was like Zhang Yi, they were both protecting the altar. But the problem was, the woman promised the ghost fetus that she would only protect the altar with Chen Ji's statuette in it, and she did not need to care about the other altar. The old man said that the altar with Chen Ji's statuette was the real altar originally in the cursed house. The altar that Chen Ge later saw inside the house was placed there by a young man named Jiang Ming. The key problem was that the replacement altar also had a mud statuette inside it initially. It had Jiang Ming's name carved on it, but it disappeared without a trace later. It had probably been taken away by Jiang Ming. I am the first, Fan Yu is the second, and from the current clues, it looks like Jiang Ming is the third. If he left at that moment, he would arrive in eastern Zhejiang at dawn. So, Chen Gu did not make his move immediately but chose to rest. Tomorrow, I'll have to visit the futuristic theme park again, but I won't get past the security with the hammer. That's a problem. Chapter 991 Hidden Clu Chen Gu believed that with how the people at the futuristic theme park viewed him, even if he went there, he would not be able to get any information from them. The workers there evaded him the moment they saw him. In their eyes, Chen Gu was probably as scary as an actual ghost. Chen Gu had a feeling that they had misunderstood him a little bit, but with the time crunch, he did not have time to explain the situation to them. Since I can't go through the theme park's security with the hammer, I should head to the hospital. Chen Gu turned his attention to his previous victims. When I went in for the visitation, the futuristic theme park arranged for their people to follow me on the visitation. They experienced the terror for themselves, so they should have some connection with me. People were the most fragile when they were sick. Chen Gu planned to have a chat with the workers who had fainted inside the haunted house at the hospital tomorrow but of course, the premise had to be that they had already woken up. Worrying will not change the situation. I'd better get a good rest while I can. He set an alarm and then drifted off to sleep. At 8 a.m. the next morning, after brushing his teeth and washing his face, he summoned Old Bai and Dr. Wei. I will leave the management of the haunted house to you. I have something else to do in the morning. Xiao Chen, what kind of problem are you facing? Dr. Wei only needed one glance to realize how different Chen Gu was from normal. Yesterday, I heard from Zhang Yi that the ghost fetus is going to come soon. Is that what you're worried about? I am slightly worried about that, but the problem is not as serious as he made it out to be. Chen Gu flashed a bright smile. Just take good care of the haunted house and leave the rest of me. Actually, you can rely on us when you need it. After all, this is place is our home too. Okay, don't worry. Chen Gu had Dr. Wei and Old Bai return to their respective scenarios. He opened the gates of the haunted house and walked out. Since it was the holiday season, the employees had arrived earlier than necessary. Go in and do your makeup. For the next few days, I might not be around the haunted house during the day, so I will leave everything in your capable hands. Boss, doesn't you normally go out at night? Why are you suddenly changing it to the day? Gu Feiyu was a man without much cunning, and he asked that question directly. I have something to deal with. It should be able to be completed within nine days. After that, I will give everyone a chance to have a good break. 
Chinga entered the dressing room and applied the makeup on the few employees seriously. Thank you so much for all of your dedication. The competition between the new Century Park and the futuristic theme park had reached its climax. The workers had prepared a long time for this, so Chingu would not go and trouble them. He went to greet Uncle Su. Before the theme park opened for business, Chingu carried the heavy backpack and left the theme park. He stopped a passing cab. Once he got into the car, the smile on Chin Ji's face slowly disappeared. Where are we going? The major crimes unit of the city police station. When Chin Gu arrived at the station, he glanced at the guard and then at the backpack he was carrying. After a moment's thought, he decided not to barge in just like that but pulled out his phone to give Li Jing a call. Brother Zheng, it's me. Chen Gu? How can I help you? I am outside the station now. Can you fetch me? There are certain things that I need to confirm. You are the first person who dared speak in such tone to an inspector from the major crimes unit. Wait a minute, I'll get you in a bit. Ten minutes after hanging up the phone, Li Jing appeared at the door. So, tell me, what do you want to confirm? Can we go in and talk? We do not allow normal citizen into this place. Li Jing glanced at Chen Gu and then slightly shook his head. Never mind, come with me. The two entered the station, and Li Jing led Chen Gu into an empty conference room. Everyone is working. It's not too good for people to see you inside the building even though everyone knows you. Glancing at Chen Ji's backpack, Li Jing had a guess what was inside it. Relax, do you want something to drink? Brother Zheng, I have two things to ask you. Chen Gu got to the chase immediately. Go ahead. Has Chang Gu woken up? Chen Gu cared a lot about Chang Gu. He was a director, and he specialized in using ghosts as actors in his movies. Other than that, he was the person who knew Chang Wenyu the best in this world. At the School of the Afterlife, Chang Wenyu had sacrificed herself to destroy the door, but she had ended up being killed by the combined effort of several top red specters. Theoretically speaking, her soul should have been torn apart already, but the black phone still had Chang Wenyu's page even after her death. The black phone said that Chang Wenyu had not officially died. Chang Gu was Chang Wenyu's only family, so if Chang Wenyu had to place her trust on a person in this world, that person would definitely be Chang Gu. Chen Gu wished to get in touch with Chang Gu to find out what Chang Wenyu had held back, how she had managed to stay alive. It was never wrong to be too careful. To be able to reach the top among the red specters, she should not be underestimated. That was what Chen Gu had gained from his past experience. The physical wounds on his body have been healed, but he has not woken up. The doctor has done an MRI scan on his brain, and they did not find any problems. Li Jing felt that Chen Gu was being exceptionally severe that day. What's the second thing? Chen Gu took in a light breath and then turned to Li Jing. Inspector Li, do you still remember Li Wan City? When Li Wan City was mentioned, Inspector Li's expression slowly changed. He moved his chair to sit before Chen Gu. I only remember parts of it, and I have forgotten a lot. That day, you were chasing after Jia Ming and entered Li Wan City. Then you ran into me inside the small town. In the end, it was me who carried you out, but in that chaos, Jia Ming managed to escape. Chen Gu had no idea how much Li Jing remembered about that night. That was an unspoken truce between him and Li Jing. After leaving Li Wan City, neither of them had asked the other about what happened on that night. Li Jing's eyes moved away from Chen Gu. He looked at the vapor that rose from the hot water inside water glass. No matter what had happened that night, there was a truth that could not be changed. It was Chen Gu who carried the fainted inspector out from Li Wan City. The young man before him had saved his life. Of course, I remember all that. Actually, we have been continuing our search for Jia Ming. All the signs point to the fact that he has not left Jiu Jiang. Li Jing stood up. Jia Ming's case is being personally handled by Captain Yen. I will take you to meet him. 
The two left the conference room, walked down the corridor, and reached an office on the third floor. When they knocked on the door, Captain Yen was talking to someone on the phone. The man whom Chen Gu associated with patience and kindness had a bright red face from anger. At certain agitating points, he even slammed his fists repeatedly on the table. Two to three minutes after the phone call ended, Captain Yen slowly returned to his jovial self. When he saw Chen Gu, a smile naturally appeared on his face. Li Jing, why did you bring Xiao Chen over today? Is he here to ask for more reward money? We are not the finance department. You're at the wrong place. Haha. <laughs> Captain Yen, Chen Gu is here to ask about the case with Jia Ming. As if worried that Captain Yen might refuse to answer, Li Jing added kindly on Chen Ji's behalf, after all, he was present during the event. He is one of the victims and also one of our witnesses. I do not think we should hide the details of the case from him. Currently, the case has gotten so big that it involves too many things. Captain Yen had Li Jing close the door of the office before he continued. 36 hours after Jia Ming escaped from Liwan City, we found Jia Ming outside a residential house very far away from Liwan City. But the problem was that he was not alone. Jia Ming has reappeared? Chen Gu remembered that Jia Ming should still be trapped inside the door. This time, he was here to persuade the police to help him with something else, but he did not expect to get a surprise discovery like this. Captain Yen, where is this residential building that Jia Ming reappeared at? I wish to go take a look. It was an old building. A fire once happened there, and it was right next to Peiji Academy. It has been burned before? One would need to go through a door to leave the Red World. Chinga knew that there was a door in eastern Jiujiang inside a building that had been raised by a big fire before. Ghost Fire The scenario whose door pusher had been consumed by Dr. Gao. Captain Yen pulled out a document from the lowest layer of his drawer. There were four people who appeared alongside Jia Ming. There was a young man about 20, a middle-aged man about 40, a woman who seemed like she suffered from a mental illness, and a child about four to five years old. Flipping through the document, Captain Yen had already confirmed all their identities. The young man's name is Bei Yi. He killed his own father and younger brother, Bei Wen. His mother shouldered the blame on his behalf and is currently locked up in prison. The middle-aged man around 40 is a gambler. His name is Jin Chun. He has no fixed occupation. There have been many complaints about his attitude, and he has been booked several times for domestic violence, shoplifting, and drunk driving. We have a thick case on him. The woman's name is Wang Qing. She is not a local. Her family does not have any history of mental illnesses, so her mental problem should not be hereditary but caused by some kind of trauma. Last is the boy. Strangely enough, we cannot get any information on him. We have visited all of Jin Chun's previous neighbors. They could only tell us that the family had a daughter, but the daughter went missing a few years ago. They were shocked when we told them that Jin Chun actually had a boy as well. Chen Ge had an impression of all the people that Captain Yen had mentioned. Needless to say, he remembered Jia Ming. There was another evil spirit living in him, and he had once served the ghost fetus. The family of three were once the passengers on the hearse, and they entered Liwan City with Chen Gu. Last, but not least, Bei Yu was a local of Liwan City. He was a murderer that once hid himself in the hotel with the cannibalistic owner. How did the mix of them end up together? Jia Ming was exceptionally cunning, and Bei Yi was a mentally unstable killer. How could the two of them even tolerate hanging out the family of three? In Chen Ji's mind, of the family of three, the father was a worthless person who bullied the weak but was fearful of the strong, the mother never spoke to anyone and would not give any response to any outer stimulus, the boy was very cute, but that was everything to him. In the eyes of a murderer and a madman, being cute would not save him. If anything, it would only invoke the cruelty and madness hidden inside their hearts. Jia Ming and Bei Yi did not kill the family of three? To understand the logic of a murderer, 
one had to look from the perspective of the murderer and see the problem from their angle. Liwan City was not that far away from the scenario of the ghost fire. It was not that close, nor that far. So, how did this group of injured, old, and defenseless people pass through the world behind the door safely? Chen Ji's brain started to spin, and various speculations appeared in his mind. Perhaps one of them knew a safe path. It could be Bei Yi or Jia Ming. They slithered away during the commotion, and their aim was to find the other door. The family of three were normal citizens, but Jia Ming and Bei Yi wasted so much energy to protect them, going so far as to bring them out of the door. They have to be after something. The middle-aged man is a gambler. To obtain the thing that he wants, he could even do something like sacrificing his own daughter. Bringing him around is just a burden. As for the circumstances around the mother, she seemed to have been through a huge trauma. She was just a walking human shell. Since both of the adults are so normal, it is quite clear that the reason Bei Yi and Jia Ming protected the family of three to escape from the world behind the door was the child. Chapter 992 I know what he looked like as a baby, there has to be something special about the child. But what could it be that would cause Jia Ming and Bei Yi to willingly risk their lives to help him? Chin Go slowly narrowed his eyes, and only one possibility came to mind. The child is one of the candidates for the ghost fetus. The ghost fetus is possibly in possession of that child. Based on all the known information, Chin Go came to a conclusion that was very close to the truth. Chen Go, what are you thinking about? Captain Yen prompted Chen Go, seeing how silent he was. It was nothing. I was just thinking how weird it was that the family of three would end up together with two wanted individuals. Chen Go looked at Captain Yen. And the strange thing is that it does not feel like the family of three are being taken hostage, but they are being protected by the two. We have considered this. Our top priority is to capture Jia Ming and Bei Yi. Captain Yen took out another document. They have been moving around different hiding places over this period of time, but strangely enough, they did not leave Jiu Jiang, like there was something very important to them in this city. Even with the risk of being captured, they refused to leave this city. The more Captain Yen said, the more unusual Chen Ge felt the child was. The boy had to have some kind of connection with the ghost fetus. Captain Yen, we mustn't give them any more time to escape from the judgment of the law anymore. I have a very bad feeling about this. We have to bring them in as soon as possible. Chen Gu was really running out of time. He currently had so little information that it was practically impossible to find the ghost fetus within eight nights. We have already started to triangulate their location and the range is slowly being drawn closer and closer. We will have them in custody within the next three days. Captain Yen was personally handling Jia Ming's case. This proved how serious he treated the case. After all, Jia Ming was wanted for very serious crimes. He had murdered his wife, attacked the police, and taunted the law enforcement more than several times. Within three day? Chen Gun nodded lightly. Captain Yen, can you bring me along on that operation? There was an evil spirit hiding in Jia Ming, and the boy could be related to the ghost fetus, Chen Gu was worried about possible injuries on the police's side. You'd better stay quietly at your theme park. I heard that your theme park has recently gotten in serious competition with the futuristic theme park, so you should focus on that and stop running around aimlessly. Fine. Chen Gu gave him promise verbally but used his Yang vision to scan the documents that had been left open on the table. He realized with some shock that of the three locations that the police had been watching closely, he was very familiar with two of them. One was Liwan City, and the other was Jiang Yuan Apartments. If there is nothing else, you can go for now. Captain Yen seemed to notice that Chen Gu was stealing looks at the documents on his table, but he did not stop him. Perhaps he was using this method to help Chen Gu. It did not technically violate the law, and it did not go against his own principles. Actually, there is one other thing. Chen Gu did not hide the information from Captain Yen. I wish to look for a person at Jiu Jiang. What kind of person? 
he should be younger than me. Is that the only clue you have? There are so many people who are younger than you, how do you expect we help you with that? Chinga felt helpless, hearing Captain Yan's reply. The information that he had was limited, and part of what he knew could not even be shared with the police. I know what the person looked like when he was a baby. With a photo comparison, you should be able to find that person. Chinga revealed yet another piece of information. Back on the rooftop of the building at the edge of Liwan City, the shadow had been surrounded by Zhang Ye and Dr. Gao. In the end, he had needed to borrow strength from the ghost fetus, and during the final phase of the battle, there had been the skull of a baby that appeared on the chest of the shadow. The baby's face had been twisted in a horrible grimace, consumed by curses and anger. The baby was supposed to represent the birth of new life, but its eyes were filled with venom and the wish for destruction. Chenga had a deep impression of that baby's face. At the time, he had considered that he might run into the situation like this, so he had memorized the baby's face as best as he could. This was the most direct clue that he possessed regarding the ghost fetus, he knew how the ghost fetus looked like when he was still an infant. Chin Ge, these two clues that you have are too general. Just looking through the database will exhaust a lot of manpower and time, and it might not even give us any real results. Captain Yen tapped the surface of the table lightly. I can help you, but you have to give me a reasonable reason that will be able to persuade me to do so. Someone wants to kill me, and the killer left behind three clues. He is younger or of the same age as me, I know what he looked like when he was very young, and he leaves behind altars that contain mud statuettes inside them. Since he was there to seek help from the law enforcement, Chin Gu would not hide too much information from them. He had seen many horror movies in the past, and he did not approve of the actions of the many main characters where they only thought about finding help from the police when the danger was right before the eyes. The ending would be that the phone could not be connected because the telephone line had been severed or something along those lines. But Chen Gu was different. The mission that he had only lasted for nine nights. On the first day, he went to the police for help. He would leave no chance for any accidents to occur. Chapter 993, Trap or Opportunity Chen Gu told Captain Yen and Li Jing all the information that he could share with them. Once the two heard that someone planned to take Chen Ji's life, their expressions changed immediately. They knew that Chen Gu would not joke about something like that. Since he said that someone was out to get him, it could only be true. Furthermore, Chinga had to be under a lot of pressure from the threat, or else with Chen Ji's personality, he would not have gone to the police for help without any concrete evidence. They talked for another hour, and Chen Gu told the police everything that he could. Then Captain Yen called over the station's profile expert. Based on Chen Ji's description, they drew a picture of the ghost fetus when he was a baby. After leaving everything with the police, Chen Gu left in a hurry to the next location. The child with Jia Ming probably corresponds to one of the altars. He knows the shadow and the ghost fetus better than Zhang Yi. After he is captured, the fog around the ghost fetus will disperse. After taking the cab to the hospital, Chen Gu went to the hall for fainted patients. There were many patients who had left after they woke up, but their empty beds would quickly be taken by new patients. As the popularity of Chen Ji's haunted house continued to grow, there would occasionally be times when there were not enough beds, and they would have to add new beds temporarily. Carrying the heavy backpack, with the nurse leading the way, Chen Gu was brought to one of the sick rooms. The employees from the futuristic theme park enjoyed good benefits. The upper management at the park had arranged for their six workers to share a private room at the hospital. After knocking, Chen Ge entered the room. The police officer, Xiao Ling, and the woman with the long hair were playing cards. When the three saw Chen Ge, they shivered on instinct and the memory that they had forgotten with difficulty had started to surface. However, they were different from the visitors that had fainted at Chen Ji's haunted house. These workers did not think that their horrible nightmare had anything to do with Chen Ge. One thing that confused them was why everybody had fainted but Chen Gu was able to walk out from the haunted house on his own two feet. 
I visited a haunted house with them a few days ago, and what we are going to discuss will involve the business secrets of the two theme parks, so. Before Chinga finished, the nurse nodded to show that she understood, and she left the room. Chinga, sorry for what we did that day. We have made such fools of ourselves. The police officer thought that Chengu was quite a reliable person. If not for their employers, they might even have been friends. There is a problem with your haunted house. Chengu sat down beside the three with a serious expression. I hope that you will not tell another person what I am about to tell you. Okay. I came here just to confirm one thing with you. Chen Ji's eyes scanned the three in the room. Did we run into actual ghosts? that day? The three workers from the futuristic theme park did not say anything, but their expressions were complicated. Chin Good dropped his backpack in the corner of the room and then took out his phone and placed it on the table. Don't worry. I am not recording any sound bites or videos. You can search my body if you want. I just want to clarify what happened that day. The police officer and Xiao Ling both turned to the woman with the long black hair. The three shared a look. In the end, it was Xiao Ling who went up to check the door, and after ensuring it was locked, she began to whisper, It is not only you who feels that way. We also have been shivering in fear when we think back about what happened. Of the ghosts and monsters that we ran into that day, many of them were not supposed to be in the database, the police officer said with a bitter smile. That can only mean that the scenario possesses things that should not be there in the first place. In any case, I will not go to the haunted house to help around anymore. If they insist on posting me there, I will have no choice but to quit. But why would something like that happen? Is it really because of the dead people's spirits that possess the old objects? Like the altar inside the cursed Japanese house? Chen Gu was slowly directing the conversation. He wished to get some information, but he could not make it sound too obvious. Other than that, we cannot come up with another explanation. I heard from someone that all of the old objects were moved into the haunted house by a director with the surname Jiang. Is it possible that director Jiang knew that something like this would happen? Chen Ge asked with obvious curiosity. Who is this director Jiang? Building such a large haunted house requires a lot of money. Why would the upper management at your theme park agree to something like that? Jiang Jiao is one of the bigwigs at the theme park. He is also one of the shareholders of the theme park. He was in the real estate business, and I heard he had an altercation with your theme park's director Luo about 10 years ago. Xiaoling sat back down on the bed. In any case, he is a very important person and small employees like us will not know anything about him. He had an altercation with Director Luo? That was something that Chen Ge did not expect. He felt like he was standing inside a spiderweb that was weaved through the years. He was slowly getting close to the truth, but the spider that spun the web had its eyes on him as well. Yes, they were both in real estate in the past, but for some reason, they both wanted the same piece of land in western Zhejiang. In the end, it was taken by Director Luo. The woman with the long hair seemed to know many things. The presence that she carried herself with separated her from other normal workers. Is it the land that New Century Park is currently sitting on? Yes, at the time, the piece of land looked normal, but now I cannot help but be impressed by the foresight of the bigwigs. Normal? On the surface, Chinga knew it looked normal but it was definitely not normal underground. He memorized this detail and changed the subject. The history of the older generation does not have anything to do with us. I just wish to understand the reason for Jiang Jiao purposely moving those old objects into the haunted house. Don't you think he's up to something? Chen Ge asked. I went to check up on the information regarding this after I left your theme park. I realized that altar was not a shrine to honor the gods, it is to feed the ghosts with curses. Every altar has a mud statuette inside it, and anyone who comes into contact with mud statuette will be cursed. That is such a trivial attitude regarding the safety of the visitors. There must be some kind of misunderstanding there. 
If the altars are just placed there, something bad will definitely happen, Chinga said in a serious tone. You have personally experienced how scary the haunted house can be when it goes out of control. This is related to human lives. I must have a good chat with the management of your haunted house. Does any of you know how to contact Jiang Jiao? The few were just employees, so Chin Gu did not expect they would help him gain contact with one of the futuristic theme park's bigwigs, Jiang Jiao. Instead, he was trying to fish for information about Jiang Ming from them, and then he would make his move that night. That was why he did not have the police intervene into the issue at the futuristic theme park. The specters at the cursed house had seen a mud statuette with Jiang Ming's name on it before. This meant that Jiang Ming was one of the nine children. The intervention from the police would ruin his plan and complicate the situation. This Jiang Ming looks about the same age as I am. When the shadow separated from the ghost fetus, he would have been about ten. I saw him before at the theme park. He looked normal and had a friendly presence about him. Why would someone like him be selected by the ghost fetus? Could this be a trap set by the ghost fetus? The chance of the ghost fetus being inside Jiang Ming was not high, but Chen Gu still planned to meet him in person that night. When the employees from the futuristic theme park heard that Chen Gu wanted to contact Jiang Jiao, they all acted strangely. They did not deny Chen Ji's request, but turned to look at the woman with the long hair. Wait, you can really contact Jiang Jiao? I can't contact Jiang Jiao, but his stepson, Jiang Ming, is my ex-boyfriend. We were together for three and a half years, but we broke up for a ridiculous reason. The woman had the air of a powerful woman. Even if she was feeling sad, she would not allow it to show on her face. A ridiculous reason? What kind of ridiculous reason? Chen Gu was intrigued. When I went to his home for the first time, I realized that there was a child about four or five years old staying at his home. The boy's name is also Jiang Ming. I asked him what his relationship with the boy is, and all he could do was stammer. Chapter 994 If you don't help me, there might not be a chance in the future. There is a child by the name of Jiang Ming who's Jiang Ming's child? Chen Gu did not expect to be given such surprising news with his casual question. Yes, I didn't think much of it at the time. I just thought it was weird until the boy suddenly called Jiang Ming dad. The woman with the long hair elicited a bitter smile. I had not heard Jiang Ming mention having a family before. That day, we had a horrible dinner. Before we parted, I asked him what his relationship with that child was. For some reason, he got mad at me and told me to stop asking random questions. Was I being too unreasonable? If the boy wasn't his, if he'd adopted him, I could fully understand that, but he refused to say anything. How was I supposed to take in all that? It shouldn't be his biological son. Why would his own child share his name? Chin Gu was not there to listen to someone else's love story. Before waiting for the woman to continue, he asked, What does the child look like? Is there anything physically different about him? The child is quite pitiable. He is deaf in both ears, and I believe he is forbidden to leave the house. His vocabulary is very limited. The woman sounded worried. Jiang Ming comes from a wealthy family, but I don't think they plan to send the boy to receive any treatment. During dinner, whenever I raised the topic of the boy, Jiang Ming would get angry at me. When you visited his home, did you hear Jiang Ming tell the boy anything? Things like altars, mud statuettes, curses, or anything like that? During dinner, Jiang Ming locked the boy in his bedroom. He appeared to have something against the boy communicating with the outside world. Okay, I understand. Chen Ge nodded. One last question, what is Jiang Ming's address? I wish to visit him in person. How about I give you his phone number? These things are better said in person. Things get muddled in the phone. At Chen Ji's insistence, the woman finally gave him Jiang Ming's address. When Chen Gu left the hospital, it was already afternoon. He arranged all the information that he had gotten in the sick room. The many scenarios that he had experienced hid a lot of different information. 
what had appeared useless now became clues for him to look for the ghost fetus. If the truth was a giant puzzle, what Chen Gu was doing now was piecing the puzzle together. He took a cab back to New Century Park. After ensuring that there were no issues at the haunted house, he took the taxi to Eastern Zhejiang again. The countdown had already started, so there was no time to lose. When Chen Gu arrived at Eastern Zhejiang's White Dragon Tunnel, it was already dark. When I first came here, I found many bad things hidden in the surrounding woods, but this time, it's much quieter. He waited until 8 p.m. before he dragged the heavy backpack into the tunnel. The abandoned tunnel was deserted. The ground was littered with rotten tree branches and trash. Chen Gu did not open the light. He placed his hand on the cold tunnel wall and slowly walked into it. Light disappeared behind him, and he entered a world dominated by darkness. Is anyone home? The ghost fetus is coming alive, and this might be the first place he attacks. Before that happens, I wish to share all of the information I know with you so that you can be prepared. Chenga had not been so desperate to run into a ghost in his life. He had gone there to look for the red specter from the car accident and her son. Of all the red specters that Chen Gu had met, the son was the most unique one. Most door pushers had their door inside a certain building, and that building became a bridge that connected the real world to the blood world. But the door pusher in White Dragon Tunnel was different. When he died, his body had been stuck inside the car window. The fire in the car had melted his body to the car window, and the door that he pushed open was inside his body. After entering the world behind the door many times, there was one thing that Chen Gu was certain of. It was easy to enter the world behind the door, but to exit it, one needed the door pusher's permission. The school of the afterlife was a four-star scenario. After being led unwillingly into the world behind its door, Chen Gu had been worried about this issue. If the ghost fetus ambushed him and dragged him behind his door, Chen Gu would be dead. To avoid that from happening, the best solution that Chen Gu could think of was to stay with the Red Spectre from the car accident and her son. That way, even if he was trapped in the world behind the door, he could escape easily through the door inside the son's body. The reason the shadow had gone to the tunnel was probably because he wanted to gain access to this unique door as well, but the boy had avoided him every time. However, it was also because of the shadow that the red specter from the car accident and her son did not dare wander away from the tunnel. Once they left, bad things would happen. Leaning against the wall, Chinga reached the spot where he had first met the red specter from the car accident. Changes slowly appeared in the tunnel. The air turned wet, and even with his yin-yang vision, the things around him became blurry like there was a dark fog rolling out from the deepest part of the tunnel. A scratching sound echoed in his ears like the sound of many bugs crawling on the wall. Chenga stopped moving. He's here. In the dark tunnel, a pair of red eyes slowly opened. Following a shrill wail of mercy, a large spider appeared. Six carved appendages pierced deeply into the wall, and the enormous body was filled with wailing faces, and in the middle of all the faces was the head of a small boy. Black and red tattoos crawled on the boy's face, and his bloodshot eyes looked down on Chen Gu. There was another red specter sitting on the spider's back. She wore a tattered dress, but she looked at Chen Gu relatively kindly. The boy seems to have gotten stronger. The door of White Dragon Tunnel was inside the boy's body. A normal red specter was not his match. If he ran into someone whom he could not win, he could open the door inside his body and escape. No wonder even the shadow could not do anything to him. But this kind of special power was gained after an unimaginably painful sacrifice. We've cooperated before, at Liwan City. That time, your mom came with me. She's the best witness. Chen Gu wanted to build a bond first. After realizing that the woman did not have a bad impression of him, he continued. Last time, we worked together to kill the shadow but in reality, the shadow had long separated himself from the ghost fetus. Now, no one knows what the ghost fetus is, but one thing's for sure, he is very scary and is capable of killing all of us very easily. 
Chapter 995, Old Friends It was not that difficult to persuade the woman and her son. They knew about the horrors of the shadow better than Chen Ge, and they knew about the ghost fetus existence. They just did not expect him to arrive so soon. The two red specters agreed to help, but they only agreed to let the woman follow Chen Ge. The son refused to leave the tunnel, no matter what. This time, the situation was different from Liwan City. Chen Ge had more than enough red specters to help him. One more red specter was not going to change the situation. What he needed was that unique door, and the door argued about this for a long time. Chen Ge slowly understood what the two red specters were worried about. The door that the sun pushed open toward the tunnel behind the door. No matter where he opened that door, it would lead to that same place. But the problem was, the sun had only opened the door in the real world. He had not attempted to open the door inside the world of another red specter. He could not guarantee that his door would lead them back to real life. This was the first problem. The second problem was that the sun had a very curious power, dream weaving. After he consumed a specter, he could gain a part of the specter's memory and use that memory to weave a dream. The intensity of the memory impacted how long the dream would last. Most of the dreams dissipated after a moment, but there were a small handful of dreams that could exist for a long time, as long as the boy continued to feed them. The son had spent many years rigging the tunnel with many dream traps. Once one accidentally stepped into them, even for the shadow, it would be a difficult trap to escape from. These dreams were scary, but they needed the sun to continue repairing and feeding them. If he left for an extended period, the dreams would all dissolve on their own. When the ghost fetus arrived, nowhere would be safe. Chen Gu argued with the ferocity of truth on his side. After enough persuasion, the sun finally agreed. Within the next nine days, he would follow Chen Gu and leave for one night. One night was more than enough for Chen Gu. He was very appreciative of the two red specters' help. After they had made their agreement, he left with the woman from the car crash and hurried toward Liwan City. Danian, one day, if every page of your comic is filled with red specters, will you feel too pressured? You are the strongest specter beneath a red specter, you have to have confidence in yourself. You can do it. No matter what other people say, you are the best. I mean, take a look at old by now. Look how amazing he is. He should try to consume other specters. When you become a red specter, you'll become the strongest red specter beneath demon gods. Chen Gu walked for a long time before he got a taxi driver who was willing to take him. On the way to Liwan City, he talked to himself while hugging the comic. The driver thought that he was talking on the phone, but when Chen Gu got out of the car, he realized that Chen Gu was not wearing any earbuds. Chen Gu managed to reach Liwan City before midnight. He found the door, and when the door was covered in blood at midnight, he carried the backpack and pushed the door open. The blood fog stuck to his skin, and his breathing became difficult. Every breath filled his lungs with the scent of blood. Chen Ge activated the recorder to summon Suin, and then he wandered down the red streets. Compared to his previous time there, the place had not changed much. When the door was pushed open, Xiaobu should have realized my presence already. Liwan City was a three. Five-star scenario, and the blood covered almost half of the city. After the shadow died, most of the locals had slipped away, but many new ghosts had migrated there to replace them. Chen Ge only took few steps when he felt many malicious stares on him. They were very interested in the living human, but due to Suin, they did not do anything. It must be quite tiring for Xiaobu to manage such a big place alone. If I have time in the future, I should come and help her. Narrowing his eyes, Chen Ge smiled at the buildings around him. Don't just stand there and watch. Why don't you come and join me? There was no answer. Chen Gu wanted to release Yan Danian, have him stop drawing, and get him involved in some fighting. Consider yourself lucky. After walking past several deserted streets, the blood fog thickened. Bloody raindrops fell on Chen Gu, and a figure appeared in the rain. She wore a red raincoat, and her lips were sewn together. 
Her bloodshot eyes followed Chen Ge and Suin. The woman in the red raincoat. Chen Ge stopped moving and waved. Have you found your child? The woman slowly walked toward Chen Ge, and when she reached his side, she shook her head lightly. If he's not behind the world inside the door, is it possible that he's actually not been killed by the shadow, but is hidden somewhere around Jiu Jiang? Chen Ge looked into the woman's pair of clear eyes. The ghost fetus is possessing one of the children, and your child might be one of them. I have done a lot of research and have narrowed down the candidates to nine children. Chen Gu was about to speak when the woman suddenly grabbed his arm. The chill seeped into his skin, and the chill crawled up his bones and into his heart. The woman's lips were sewn shut, so she could not speak, but a pleading cry escaped from her mouth. Calm down, I came to get you to leave with me. For the next eight days, I will track down all nine children, but during this period, you have to listen to me and cannot act on your own. Chen Gu struggled loose from the woman. Where is Xiaobo? Bring me to see her. I have something that I need to clarify with her. The woman in the red raincoat slowly turned around and signaled for Chen Gu to follow. They walked through Liwan City and came to the building where Zhang Ye and Dr. Gao had battled the shadow. The innocent red little girl was lying against the wall, using her own blood to slowly clean away the curse left behind by the shadow. It would take years or even decades to remove the curse that the shadow had left on Liwan City, but Xiaobu did not seem to mind. Before Chen Ge got close, Xiaobu sensed Chen Ge. She pulled back all her blood vessels and walked toward Chen Ge. The girl reacted curiously when she saw Chen Ge. Her eyes only stopped for a second on Chen Ji's face before she turned to Chen Ji's shadow like there was something interesting that captured her attention there. She stared at his shadow and started to daydream. Xiaobu, what are you thinking? Chen Gu wanted to walk forward to tussle her hair, but considering that she was the door pusher in Liwan City and could be as powerful as a top red specter, he cleverly gave up that idea. I've come to see him due to something important. The ghost fetus that separated from this shadow years ago is about to be born. He is currently in Jiujiang, hiding in one of the children. I wish to invite you to come help me find him. Her hazy eyes wandered between Chen Ge and the shadow before Xiaobu nodded. After leaving the door at Liwan City, Chen Ge glanced at his phone. It's still earlier. I should take a detour to the third sick hall. I haven't seen Man Nan in such a long time. I kinda miss that little guy. Chapter 996 Door beside the bed, the third sick hall, was a turning point for Chen Go. Before this mission, he had been on the defensive. It was at this place that he started to resist and realized that the bad guys could also feel afraid. Returning to where it all began, Chen Go jumped over the wall and found the door. Since it was already past midnight, Chen Gu could only try another method to open the door. Actually, he had been meaning to try this, but he had not had the chance. There were still many puzzles around the door. Many door pushers knew so little about the doors that they pushed open, much less a normal person like Chen Gu. Summoning Su Yin and the Red High Hells, Chen Gu used the blood vessels and curse, but it did not affect the door. He then summoned the stench and the headless woman. The number of red specters increased, and the hellish winds blew. Many blood vessels crawled on the wall as if they were trying to dye the whole corridor red. Each red specter used their own power, but they could not make the door budge. Chen Go held the comic and was about to summon the other red specters when the door suddenly shuddered. Fresh blood leaked from the gap, and footsteps echoed in the empty room. Finally, there's a reaction. Could it be Man Nan? The footsteps approached. When the blood covered the door, the door was opened. A boy slightly taller than Chen Ji's knees leaned against the door and peeked out. Man Nan, long time no. Slam. The door was closed instantly, Chen Gu did not even have the chance to react. Several seconds later, the door opened again. Men Nan's eyes scanned the lineup of red specters, and he raised his little hand to slap himself. The door opened, and more than a handful of red specters were eyeing him like he was some candy. 
There was no realer nightmares than this. Slam. The door was closed again, and the blood on the door quickly faded away. Men Nan, Brother Nan, I'm here on important business. The ghost fetus separated from the shadow is coming back. He is mad and extremely vengeful. Chen Gun knocked on the door. It's very dangerous now. I need you to open the door. Several seconds later, the door creaked open a sliver. Men Nan leaned against the door and peeked out. You're not here to kill me? Why would you think that? We've been through so much, and we've survived many dangerous incidents. I would never harm you. The door slowly opened, and Men Nan's eyes wandered around the surrounding red specters. He was afraid. It felt like he was a primary school student being surrounded by a group of tattooed gangsters. I know about the ghost fetus. I've heard about him from the people of the Ghost Stories Society. The thing is very scary, and I'll be vanquished with one glance. Men Nan raised his hand toward Chin Go. I really can't help. See you around. I have to go fix the window. Who knows what happened in that red city? Recently, the amount of red fog has increased drastically, and I have to fix the window before tragedy strikes. Men Nan, there is no need to be so humble. Yes, you are not as powerful as other red specters, but perhaps because you are too weak, you have retained human rationality, and that is the most important thing. Chenga squatted before Men Nan. You can communicate freely with me, and your intelligence is incredibly high. If something happens to me, you can come to your own decision with your own analysis. Men Nan was the weakest among all the red specters, but he had something that the other red specters did not. He had retained his sanity and was not consumed by negative emotions. How come your praise doesn't make me feel any happiness? If anything, I feel offended. Men Nan scratched his neck as his small brows creased together. Let me think about it. No door pusher will be able to survive this. If we can't stop the ghost fetus, he will eventually come to you. Have you forgotten the days when you were trapped by the Ghost Stories Society? The ghost fetus will be crueler than them. After a few minutes of conflict, Men Nan promised, Fine, I'll help you one last time. After we deal with the ghost fetus, I'll bring you back here immediately. Chenga flipped open the comic. He valued Man Nan so much because of a plan that he needed to complete. The plan would work without a hitch even if he had lost his consciousness and was dying. Okay, that's a promise. If you dare lie to me, I will haunt you forever. Closing the door to third sick hall, Men Nan was sucked into the comic. The child has a sharp tongue but a soft heart. Chen Ge summoned the red specters back one by one. Finally, only Suin was left. The two stayed on the empty corridor. Chen Ge took out the recorder. Suin, one night, if you can't find me anymore, do not do anything rash. You can come and consult Men Nan. He is a very clever ghost. He will help you make the correct choice. Do you understand me? With an unresolvable melancholy in his eyes, Suin nodded lightly. Come, let's head to the next location. Chen Go left the third sick hall. He did not go to rest, but took a cab to the place where Jiang Ming lived. After tonight, I will only have seven nights left. Time flies. Jiang Ming lived in a high-end residential area at the center of Zhejiang. According to the employee from the futuristic theme park, this house belonged to Jiang Ming. Only Jiang Ming and the boy lived there. The cab stopped at the gate of the area. The gate was closed, and the guard was playing on his phone. Walking in from the front door was going to be difficult. After getting out of the car, Chen Ge carried the backpack and came to the other side of the gated residential area. He sat by the road and summoned Men Nan. The fourth floor of the third block in Area A, I need you to scout ahead for me. The target is a child about your size. He is deaf in both ears. His name is Jiang Ming. He should be one of the nine candidates chosen by the ghost fetus. Men Nan was the only choice to do something with such a high difficulty. 
His intelligence was sharp, and he was a red specter. He could move freely at night, and he was powerful enough to deal with any normal threats. You want me to go alone? If the ghost fetus is really in him, wouldn't I be dead? Man Nan shook his head rapidly. The ghost fetus will only wake up in eight nights' times. I just need you to confirm this for me and observe if there's anything weird about this boy and his home. Chen Gu pointed at the surveillance camera. There is a blind spot at the left side. If you make any discoveries, I will hurry over to join you. How come I feel like you're trying to scam me? Men Nan grumbled as he headed into the residential area. Chen Gu used his Yang vision to follow his movement. Ten minutes later, Men Nan suddenly reappeared in Chen Ji's gaze. His hands were cold, and the blood vessels on his shirt were dancing. Have you fought with them? Are there other specters in the room? It's not that. The shock in Men Nan's eyes was still evident as he turned his head up to Chen Gu. There is a semi-visible door in the room. It is right next to the child's bed. There's a door by the child's bed? Yes, and something was coming out from the door. Men Nan was confused. When I tried to get close, the door vibrated like crazy, and then something weirder happened. The boy who was sleeping opened his eyes. Didn't you say that he was deaf? Wait a minute. Even if he had normal hearing, do you think a living human could hear the door to the other world open? Chengu was surprised, too. Chapter 997 I am normally a very reasonable person. After the boy woke up, the door disappeared. He couldn't see me, but he seemed to know that there was someone else in the room. He used a very low whisper and called out, Daddy. Dot. Men Nan sat next to Chen Gu. The boy and the man stared at each other. He seemed to want to express something else, but that appeared to be the only word he knew. Can you describe the door beside the boy's bed in more detail? How is that door different from your own door? It was very unreal, like it would disappear at any moment. The blood vessels on the door were very faded, and they were all focused at one location like they were pieced there. This was the first time that Man Nan had seen a door like that. It's hard to explain. I suggest you go and see it in person. Upscale apartments like these have password locks in their stairwell, and there are cameras everywhere in the courtyard. If I do anything, I'll be discovered, and that will only expose our tracks and tip off the enemy. After observing for some time, Chen Gu had noticed that the surveillance effort of the upscale residential area was very good. He had no chance of slipping into the child's home without notice. A change of plan. Chen Gu looked at the phone. When he left the third sick hall, it had been 12.50 a.m., it was now 1.30 a.m. Are you going to barge in? Not necessary. We'll return when Jiang Ming leaves for work tomorrow morning. Chen Gu stood up and went to the nearby stall to buy something to eat. Would you like some? Thanks, but it's fine. Call me when you return tomorrow. I am quite interested in that boy. Men Nan returned to the comic. After Chen Gu had his fail, he took another cab to Jiang Yuan Apartments. Originally, Chen Gu planned to leave for Coffin Village, but if he entered the mountains then, he would reach the village around dawn. There'll still be time to go in the future. I should be qualified to know more things about that village now. At 2 a.m., Chen Gu arrived at Jiang Yuan Apartments, he carried the loaded backpack and entered the corridor. He had returned to the same place with the same people, but his emotions were different. Chen Gu did not forget about the things that happened that night during his nightmare mission. This time, he purposely stuck to the scary corners. But probably due to the warning of the red specter in the building, nothing came out to scare Chen Gu. I remember, on this floor, that someone tried to drag me into a room. Chen Gu took out the hammer and politely knocked on the respective door at 2.30 a.m. He waited for a long time, but no one answered the door. Just as he was about to use the hammer to knock down the lock, a child's laughter came from the stairwell. The person who lived there moved the night you came. A boy, around eight years old, sat on the banister. His red shirt was soaked, and it dripped blood. 
his eyes were bulging and filled with whiteness. If anyone ran into a child like this in their own apartment, they would be scared witness. I am a water ghost. I was drowned. I drifted around for a long time before I found this door, and it was lucky that I managed to become a red specter. The boy jumped down from the banister. He had long hair, and his white eyes stared at Chen Gu. The promise we made that day was that you would bring the real door pusher here at 2 a.m. in three days. This isn't the third day. Why have you returned earlier than promised? I have found the clues about the real door pusher. Chen Gu put down the hammer and picked up his bag. It was not me who pushed open the door here, but my shadow. At the time, I told him all my negative thoughts. He couldn't take them anymore, so he pushed open the door, but since he was just a shadow, the door wasn't pushed open completely. Chen Gu was just speculating left and right. He did not know the truth, but he knew how to push the blame onto the shadow. You said your shadow pushed open the door? The water ghost took one step and appeared before Chen Gu in an instant. His face was leaning into Chen Gu. Only a person at their deepest despair can push open the door. Are you trying to trick me? It's all real. The shadow has now separated himself from the ghost fetus. He wants to be reborn as a human. Chen Gu told him everything he knew about the ghost fetus. The boy did not believe him initially, but the more he listened to Chen Gu, the more he was persuaded. Finally, when he heard Chen Gu mention the names Jia Ming and Bei Yi, his expression changed, and that did not escape Chen Ji's attention. Do you know Jia Ming and Bei Yi? Chen Gu knew from Captain Yen that Jia Ming and Bei Yi were indeed once spotted at Jiang Yuan apartments. Chen Gu felt like it was normal for the boy as the owner of this place to have heard their names before. I don't know them, but. The boy pointed at the door next to Chen Gu. They were the former tenants of that room. The night you came, it was Jia Ming who tried to drag you into the room to kill you. That was him? Impossible. I remember that the person who dragged me had zero warmth, it was not a living person. There is a very wicked spirit living in Jia Ming. It was the spirit who made the move that night. I have no idea why it was so determined to kill you. The boy did not have the need to lie, so he should be telling the truth. Chen Gu did not expect this coincidence. Now he regretted not opening his eyes, but the person with the biggest regret should be Jia Ming. If the man knew that Chen Gu did not carry any employees with him that night and Zhang Ye was still in hibernation, he would not have passed up the chance to murder Chen Gu. Thinking back, with how close he had escaped from death, Chen Gu shivered in fear. I suspected that there was history between you two. They failed to kill you, and as if afraid of you taking revenge on them, they ran away that night. You should have stopped them. The ghost fetus might be inside the child with Jia Ming. After killing the ghost fetus, you'll be the real door pusher. Chen Gu sighed. How do I know you're not lying to me? The boy felt like Chen Gu sounded more confident this time, and his tone had become pushier. The door here has no use for me. I just want to live a normal life. Chen Gu calculated the time and felt like there was still a chance to salvage this. You are the owner here. You even know about their names and the spirit hiding in Jia Ming, so you should have eavesdropped on other information as well, right? Why did they come here? They came here searching for an altar, and there indeed is an altar here. The boy's white eyes turned twice. As if reminded of something, he hurried to leave. Where is that altar? Chen Ge reached his hand into his backpack. That is not a question you should ask. Leave. I've already told you many things. The boy was about to escape when the sound of static and a heavy stench filled up the corridor. Don't be such a hurry to leave. I believe you have more things you can tell me. Chen Gu flipped through the comic, and blood-red shadows appeared behind him. Now you understand why Jia Ming was so desperate to leave after he failed to kill me, don't you? But don't worry. Most of the time, I am a very reasonable person. Chapter 998, Phones Have Their Own Thoughts 1, 2, 3, 4
The red specters that the boy met in a few minutes were far more than the total of red specters he had met in the past decade. He wanted to escape, but it was too late. The corridor was swallowed by red, and a tsunami of resentment was rushing through the area. I have no interest in your door, so we have no conflict of interest. You wish to get the door's approval and become the new door pusher, and the simplest way to do that is to kill the original door pusher, the ghost fetus. Thus, we have a common enemy. Chingo looked at the boy who was surrounded by multiple red specters. No matter how you look at it, we have a basis for cooperation. What do you think? I. The boy's wide eyes darted about. He realized that all his exits were blocked off, and all the red specters were looking at him like he was a piece of meat. I believe you are right. We are not enemies, and we shouldn't be enemies. If we fight, it'll only benefit the ghost fetus. So, have you remembered more details that you can share with me? Ah, uh, yes. The altar is just underground. I'll lead you there. Surrounded by red specters, the boy led everyone to the basement. The basement was very humid, and there was a moldy smell in the air. The corridor was filled with abandoned trash. There were even two rusted bicycles blocking the door. Many rooms in Jiang Yuan apartments had been rented out before, but when the tenants left, they didn't take their stuff with them. The owner was too lazy to throw them away, so the stuff got moved here. The group came to the deepest part of the corridor. There was a wooden altar at the end. The insides of the altar's walls were covered in the death characters, and it was also covered in spiderwebs and insect carcasses. The only thing missing was the mud statuette. Did Jia Ming's group come here before? No. The boy's tone became softer. This altar was left behind by an old tenant. He sold his home to settle his debt. The new owner wanted to toss away the altar due to how cursed it looks, but they were afraid of offending the spirit inside the altar, so they left it in the basement. Do you know where the family has moved to? Chengu was surprised at how successful things were going. He had found a clue to another child. On the night they moved, I heard the tenant say that they were going to send the child to a Peichi Academy in western Zhejiang, so I believe that is where they are now. A child? Peichi Academy? Chinga had once more confirmed this child was one of the people he was looking for. You still remember what the child looks like, right? Yes. Okay, for the next eight days, you will follow us to find the ghost fetus. Chin Good did not give the boy any choice, he did not know even ask the red specter for his opinion, he merely gave an order. I can't stay away from here for too long. The door will become active at night. If I ignore it for too long, the building will create a 14th floor. The boy hoped that Chin Gu would understand the severity of the situation. No worries, I will give you time to come back to close the door. Chengu invited the boy into the comic. He stood before the altar and started to consider something else. The child that this altar corresponds to shouldn't be the child with Jiaming, so how did Jiaming find this place? Can he sense the location of the altars? Is he staying at Jiaojiang to look for the other altars? If that is true, I have to find him as soon as possible. Chinga really did not expect that the few people that he let go previously would become so important now. The comic had another new red specter. Including the woman in the stage costume, the number of red specters around Chinga had reached a very scary point. However, even with so many red specters, Chinga did not feel safe. There was a gulf between baleful specters and red specters, it was the same with red specters and demon gods. To use the Red Spectre's power to kill a demon god, one needed a complete plan that made use of all the Red Spectre's power perfectly. Yet another fulfilling night. Chin Go left Jiang Yuan Apartments and returned to New Century Park. It was already dawn. Entering the haunted house, Chin Go did not go to sleep but summoned Man Nan and Tong Tong to do an experiment. After a few minutes, Chin Go climbed into bed. He slept for only three to four hours before he crawled up to prepare for another day of business. 
After putting on makeup for his employees and leaving them some simple orders, Jin Gook carried his backpack and left again. It feels like we've been seeing less and less of the boss, or is that my imagination? He probably has something important to do. We'll focus on our work. When he comes back at night, we can ask him about it. Running out from New Century Park, Chin Gu saw a taxi parked by the side of the road. He walked over, and coincidentally, it was the driver who'd driven him from Jiang Yuan Apartments the previous night. My shift's about to end. Why don't you call another cab? The driver glanced at Chin Gu. Boss, haven't we met somewhere before? Perhaps, I like to go out at night in taxis. Chen Gu opened the door and got in. Eastern Jiaojiang's futuristic themed park and step on it. Something huge is happening tonight. At the gate of the futuristic them park, Chen Gu found the worker and stated his reason for being there. He wished to meet Jiang Ming. If the latter was too much, he would buy the ticket to find him at the haunted house and start a few more live streams. As the face of New Century Park, Chin Gu was labeled as one of the most dangerous characters by the futuristic theme park. After the workers recognized him, they raced toward the office. Ten minutes later, Jiang Ming came toward Chin Gu in his employee outfit with furrowed brows. Why are you looking for me? Jiang Ming maintained his distance from Chin Gu. We should not have met before, right? I have something that I need to confirm with you. Chin Gu signaled for Jiang Ming to follow him to a more secluded area. There is an old mansion at the center of your haunted house, and there is an altar placed there. Inside that altar was my decapitated mud statuette. I wish to know what the meaning of that is. How would you know that's your mud statuette? Does it have your name on it? Perhaps it just looks like you. Now that you mention it, it does have my name on it. Chen Gu took out his phone. Here is the photographic proof. Jiang Ming's reaction was different from what Chin Gu expected. The man genuinely seemed surprised by this and did not know what the altar and mud statuette represented, or he could be a very good actor. Perhaps it's the prank of one of the employees. Don't worry, we'll conduct an investigation into this and give you a satisfactory answer. Jiang Ming gave a PR answer. If there's nothing else, wait. I will help you deal with this, but you have to have patience. Jiang Ming just wanted Chen Gu to leave. It is my working hours. I know New Century Park is a lot freer, but we are very busy here. Leave me your contact details before you go, or else I won't be able to reach you in the future. Chen Gu took out his phone and showed the QR code of his WeChat for Jiang Ming to scan. Haha, <laughs> you're an interesting one. Jiang Ming took out his phone and scanned the code. After the friend request was accepted, Jiang Ming pushed the phone back into his pocket. He did not notice the smile on Chen Ji's face, much less the two ghosts that had slipped into his phone. Chapter 999 Everyone is missing something Tong Tong's item of possession was a phone, and he was the only specter that one could communicate with from a distance. At the time, Han Bauer from the Ghost Stories Society had used this uniqueness and Gao Ru Shui as bait to lure Chen Gu out from his haunted house. But there was a weakness to Tong Tong. He was very weak, and his power would be seriously weakened in the day. It had big limitations, like his power not working in crowded places and being powerless when under direct sunlight. It was in consideration of these things that Chen Gu had conducted an experiment the previous night and had Men Nan and Tong Tong possess the same phone. Being sheltered by a red specter, Tong Tong would not suffer so much in the day. As long as nothing happened to Men Nan, Tong Tong could use his power many times, but he would expend more energy than he would at night. With the protection from a red specter, Chen Gu was not that worried about Tong Tong's safety. When discovered, Men Nan could escape with Tong Tong. There were so many people at the futuristic theme park, they could find any phone to hide in. Jiang Ming had not realized the severity of the situation. He probably did not think that Chen Gu was a threat. Seeing Jiang Ming walk away, Chen Gu put away his phone. Tong Tong and Men Nan had left his phone. 
hopefully, they can find something useful. For Jiang Jiao, to have survived so long, he must be an old fox. To get anything from him would be difficult, so the only method was to find opening through people around him. Collecting information was one of Qin Ji's plans, but there was another mission he had given Tong Tong and Men Nan. When the day darkened, he would repeat the same thing that the Ghost Stories Society had done to him on Jiang Ming. After dealing with the things there, Qin Ge rushed toward Pei Ji Academy in Western Academy. Before entering the school, he found a corner and flipped through the comic to communicate with the drowned boy. After I enter the school, notify me if you see the child. He wandered about at the gates for a while. Before he got in, a young woman about twenty came toward him. Hello, how I can help you? Chen Go looked into the school. There were children playing on the field. He hesitated before saying, There have been issues at my relative's house recently. Their child has been sent to an orphanage. The child is a bit quiet, he doesn't like to communicate with others, and his condition is getting worse. I'm afraid his life will be ruined if this continues, so I wish to bring him here to get an education. Our school accepts students with mental handicaps and other problems. If the condition is that serious, you should bring him here. The woman was kind. We are a private institution, so the fee might be a bit expensive. However, we design a special teaching plan that will be tailored specifically to each child. The fee will be expensive? Chen Ji's lips turned down, and his hands twisted together. He thought for a long time before saying, Can I please go in to take a look at how the classes are conducted normally first? Of course. All our staff here are professional and you'll find the atmosphere very conducive for study. The teacher invited Chin Gu into the school. On the field, the teachers were playing games with the children. They were simple games. The main purpose was for the children to communicate with others. Past the field was the education block. The wall had a motto written on, every child deserves an education. The classrooms were bright and filled with sunlight. They looked clean and neat. Our school focuses on three main criteria, development of intelligence, societal assimilation, and practical living. Based on the condition of each child, we have set up 12 different types of classes, the teacher explained patiently to Chin Gu, and the latter listened patiently. Initially, he was there to find the candidate selected by the ghost fetus, but when he was there, he suddenly felt touched. This world was unfair and cruel to these children, but even so, they were trying their best. Their smiles under the sun were beautiful. Chin Gu looked at the children in the classrooms. Will the ghost fetus be among them? After they reached the last classroom, there was a wetness that came from Chin Ji's hand that grabbed his backpack. He lowered his lead to look and saw a bloody palm. The child is here? Before anyone noticed, Chin Gu quickly wiped his hand clean. He did not expect the drowned boy's hint to be so obvious. Can I go in to take a look? Chen Gu scanned the classroom. Chen Gu pointed at the last row. The other children were sitting around the teacher, but there was a child who stood at the back of the class with his bag. Why is that boy standing over there? Seeing Chen Gu walk in, the teacher in the class answered his question. Wu Sheng hit some other students during class, so I gave him time out as punishment. We have to give him a correct understanding of right and wrong since they are young, letting them know that there are consequences for doing bad things. His name is Wu Sheng? Chin Gu walked up to the boy, and when he was next to the boy, his hand that held the backpack started to bleed again. It shocked Chin Gu so much that he quickly clamped them before his chest. The teacher and other students did not see it, but the boy who stood before him saw it clearly. Well, looks like we've found him. Chin Gu wiped the blood from his palm. He squatted before the boy as the female teacher walked over. Since his birth, the child hasn't said a complete sentence. He dislikes being with others, and it has escalated to full refusal to communicate with others. The teacher signaled for Chin Gu to move away from the boy. Wu Xing's father is a wandering singer. He is not a bad person. 
Initially, he thought that it was because he gave the child a bad name that he refused to speak, so he changed the boy's name to Wu Yuxing, one, and then Wu Bushing, two, thinking perhaps two wrongs made a right, but in the end, it was the name Wu Xing, three, that stuck. Wuxing's situation is similar to my relative's child. Can I chat with him? I'm afraid not. We have a responsibility toward the children. Your careless words might injure their fragile hearts. Then, can I talk with his family? After all, we're in the same boat. I can understand that. The Mr. handed Chen Gu Wuxing's father's number. They chatted for a while and Chen Gu left. Walking out from the school, Chen Gu called Wu Xing's father directly, but there was no answer. Of the few confirmed kids, one has lost her memory, one has lost his hearing, one is mute. Other than myself, everyone has lost something important. Chen Gu stood beside the road and studied the passing car. Now that I think about it, if I am one of the nine children, then I should have lost something important too, but the question is what? It is because I have lost my own shadow? Chapter 1000, Adoption Every child that was selected by the ghost fetus had a defect to them. Chin Gu should be no exception, but what he had lost might be different from the other children. His memory, shadow, and even parents, Chin Gu had lost so much that he could not tell for sure. There are seven nights left. I am getting closer to the truth. Leaving the Peiji Academy, Chin Gu returned to New Century Park. With everything that he could do for now done, he deserved a good rest. At around 8 p.m., Chin Ji's phone vibrated, and he got a message from Jiang Ming. I'm home. This was a code decided between Tong Tong, Men Nan, and Chin Gu. When Chin Gu received this message, he would take all the employees and leave the haunted house. Chin Gu arrived at the city center around 9 p.m. He did not head directly to Jiang Ming's residential area, but found a nearby restaurant to sit and eat. At 10.30 p.m., Chen Gu received the second message from Jiang Ming. It was only then that he moved slowly toward his destination. He had scouted the place out the previous night, so he knew where the surveillance blind spots were. At 11.20 p.m., Chen Gu received the third message from Jiang Ming. He took immediate action. He leaped over the wall and took only few seconds to complete all his actions. Chen Gu carried his backpack toward one of the buildings. At the same time, Jiang Ming rushed out from the stairwell, heading toward the underground parking lot. After Jiang Ming drove away, Chen Gu walked to the apartment entrance. The door that was installed at the stairwell was opened from the inside as Men Nan poked his head out. The plan was successful. Jiang Ming was completely fooled by Tong Tong. Is the boy asleep? Yes, follow me. Chen Ji's plan was simple. After the young Jiang Ming fell asleep, Tong Tong would mimic Jiang Jiao and send orders to him via his phone and have him travel all around the city that night. The stairwell and his home both use a password lock. I memorized the password when he opened them earlier. Men Nand led Chen Gu to the fourth door and opened the door. Wait a minute. Chen Gu took out plastic bags to wrap around his shoes and a pairs of gloves before entering the house. Even though this was the silk stocking district in Jiujiang, Jiang Ming's house was sparsely decorated. A lot of furniture was old and dilapidated. It felt incongruent with the rest of the place. It felt like the old furniture had purposely been put there. This whole day, Jiang Jiao has not contacted Jiang Ming. He acted very normal, just like a normal employee at the theme park. Is there any information about the boy on Jiang Ming's phone? Like who the mother is and when the boy lost his hearing? Chen Gu whispered. The phone has no incriminating information and no clues. There was not even a picture related to that boy. Basically, the boy's existence is a secret. If not for Jiang Ming's girlfriend's accidental discovery, probably no one would know about a boy who shared his name at his home. You can see it that way. The information about the boy was a blank slate. Chen Gu conducted his search around the house. To save time, he released Ol Zhou and his friends to help. The lights were not turned on, and shadows moved across the room. 
Several minutes later, Chinga really did find something. He found a crumpled letter inside the study's trash can. The content of the letter was as follows. The sender needed a lot of money, and if they were refused, they would come to take the child and not let him stay with Jiang Ming anymore. The child is a bargaining chip? Chen Gu studied the letter. The boy lives with the older Jiang Ming, but there is no information on his mother. Could the sender of this letter be the mother? Is the boy Jiang Ming's biological son? Chen Gu and his employees stood inside the study. Other than the letter, they found nothing else. Whether the boy is his biological son or not, there must be something to prove the child's identity inside this house. Jiang Ming can't have moved all of that to Jiang Zhou's place, right? Or, is there a hidden room inside this house? With another search, Ol Zhou finally found a hidden safe behind the bookshelf. Chen Gu did not need to open the safe. He only needed his employee to slip into the safe to check its contents. Ten seconds later, Ol Zhou crawled out from the gap. The boy is not related to Jiang Ming or Jiang Zhou by blood. They are taking care of him on behalf of someone else. There are adoption papers inside the safe. The husband and wife agreed for their child to stay here for the 5,000 RMB that Jiang Jiao would pay them monthly. From the signature, it reads that the boy's real father's name is Jiang Dao. There is a mud statuette inside the safe with the name Jiang Ming on it. That confirms that Jiang Ming is one of the selected candidates. Other than that, the child's real ID is stored inside the safe. His real name is Jiang Ming, but it turns that it's the young man who works at the theme park that has changed his name. Jiang Jiao's adopted son's original name was Jiang Wei. It was after Jiang Ming was arranged to stay here that Jiang Wei changed his name to Jiang Ming. Why would he do that? Does he want to use this to take something away from Jiang Ming? But there is nothing worth taking from the boy other than the fact that he was selected by the source of misfortune, the ghost fetus. There was no free love in this world. Jiang Jiao must want something from the boy, and that was why he had agreed to adopt the child. Perhaps Jiang Jiao wishes to trick the ghost fetus. He wants to become the ghost fetus father, Ol Zhou analyzed. The evil spirit possessing Jiang Jiao and Jiang Ming were both left behind by the ghost fetus. They probably wouldn't dare infringe on the ghost fetus plan. Chen Gu stood in their perspective, a normal person would not choose to have any relationship with the ghost fetus. That might not be true. What if Jiang Jiao has underestimated the ghost fetus power, or the ghost fetus has underestimated the greed of the living? You have a point there. Chen Gu nodded admiringly at Ol Zhou. He felt like Ol Zhou had a bright future. Tong Tong's plan to lure Jiang Ming away can only be used once. When Don arrives and Jiang Ming meets up with Jiang Jiao, they will realize that something is wrong, so we only have one chance tonight. Since there were no other clues to find, Chen Gu decided to meet the boy. Pushing the door open, Chen Gu looked into the room. The boy was already asleep, and he did not notice the additional people that had entered the house. To prevent Jiang Ming from being scared awake, Chen Gu summoned Ol Zhou and the rest back into the comic. Only he and Man Nan entered the bedroom. On the surface, the boy looked normal, just like any other child. One could not make the connection to the scary ghost fetus. Chen Gu and Man Nan walked to the window, and they waited for midnight. The atmosphere in the room started to change, and a door appeared quietly next to the boy's bed. Can support us, completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for come in and love the sharing story.